Hello there, thank you for joining us for another episode of Canada's Movie and TV Hosers. I'm one of your hosts, Gregory Baird, and with me is my lovely wife, Christine. Hi. And this is our star of the show, Fluffy Kitty. She's uh, she's nice and content today. Yeah, she is. So breaking down this show, we got three new trailers that we're going to talk about this week. There was more trailers that came out, but trailers. I mean, there's always trailers that come out, but we don't talk about all of them. Mm. So... Uh, the ones we're going to be talking about are second trailer for The Flash, trailer for The Haunting in Venice, and Equalizer 3. Then we're going to go into our reviews. I reviewed Chevalier, which I saw last weekend. Yes. I reviewed the whole first season of Beef on Netflix. Oh, you watched the whole season? Good. Yeah, it was a spoiler review. Uh, I did a spoiler review for Barry. Right, I haven't... Got caught up yet. Season 4, episode 3. Christine's going to be reviewing Bo is Afraid, which you got to see recently. Yeah, oh joy. We're both going to be reviewing Coherence, which was recommended right. to us from a viewer. Thank you for the suggestion there. Christine's going to review The Night Agent, first yeah. season. That's on Netflix. Uh, then we're going to go into a bunch of our reoccurring segments. Okay. So we have a bunch of reviews for that. You know, our Into the DCEU. Right. Nap time at Hogwarts and Chicote's Odyssey, oh, yeah. featuring the adventures of Janeway. And just want to mention briefly, I'm not going to review Transatlantic. I said that was one of my uh, one of the shows on Netflix because right. they had the April preview. Yeah. So that was one that I picked out. I checked out the first episode and I actually did record a review, but. It's not for me. No, and my I, review I was just you that. my review was just <laughs> kind of me talking about the things I didn't enjoy, I and there was only a couple of things that I did yeah, enjoy. So it's not your kind of thing. I, I'm not going to be doing a review. It's no. not for me. You're if you not, enjoy yeah. Transatlantic, let us know down in the comments below. Want to hear about that? You're not into historic dramas. No, I do like a lot of history no, stuff. No, but like girly historic dramas. <laughs> I think that's what I would I don't think it was that. girly. Oh, it wasn't? I thought it was. It was on PBS, I think, before this. No, I don't think so. Oh, when I looked up on Rotten Tomatoes, a one. probably, so yeah. that would sound like a PBS show. This one was just, it was just slow. Oh, okay. I just, I just couldn't get into it. Right. But, other, I mean, I saw Chevalier, and that's the uh, 18th century France, and I enjoyed that more. Okay. Okay. So, no review for that. If you enjoy this episode, you can always give us the thumbs up there. That will help us out a lot. And you can leave a comment for anything that uh, we talk about here. Or if you want to suggest a piece of media or entertainment news for us to talk about. We are down in the description below. I got, I'll got i have all the chapters so it'll be divided up in case you want to jump to a next section. Especially if we're doing a spoiler review. You can always jump to the next one. So, let's get right into it with the trailers. Which trailer would you like to talk about first? Let's talk about the Flash trailer. Okay. It's starting to hurt my brain already, because we're going to Flashpoint, and that hurts my brain a bit. It's sort of like some of the X-Men stuff where everything goes back. They're showing more Michael Keaton Batman in this. We got two Batmans. Yep. At least. And Ben Affleck. They're not showing much of him. He's, he's not really in it that much. No, but they use the same house, so he still hasn't mowed his lawn. Yeah, his uh, his Can he not get a ride Manor. on mower? Like, come on, just no, use the Batmobile on the weekend. Like, mow it, come he on. He lives in that uh, Lakeview uh, apartment to... there with that's all windows Listen, so people can see in. He needs to Remember cut that? the hay before the alder start in. See, okay? this is why we're going into the DCU <laughs> and reviewing all these DC properties because it leads up to this one. He's going to get in trouble. He's going to have a... We saw a lot more Michael Keaton Batman. We saw some more of Supergirl in it. Does this make you more excited to see this movie? Uh, it look, I'm going to go see it. It just does hurt my mind a little bit, thinking about all the going back in time business and alternate universes and stuff. It kind of hurts, like, calculus or something a little bit. Yeah, this is the Flashpoint storyline <sighs> yeah. from the comics. I'm trying to remember. It's essentially, it's an adaptation of it. We haven't seen this movie at this no. point because it doesn't come out until June. Was it That's June sixteenth? Like, I believe. I gotta, I gotta yeah. focus a bit. I gotta like really pay attention. That's the only thing. It's yeah. hard. It's like smoke coming out of my ears right now. <laughs> anyway, 
All reports have said this movie is amazing. People say it's really good. It looks like a lot. Like, I think we have to see it. it. You got two different Batman. You got Ezra Miller there that, you know, he's well, not just, exactly the greatest I'm person. I'm just not going to think about him. He's in it. He's in it playing multiple versions of The Flash. Yeah. Barry Allen. You got Michael Shannon, who's always amazing, back as General Zod. Now, that, of course, gave me flashbacks to that horrible movie that I don't like, and I didn't like that part of it. But uh, maybe they can improve upon it. He was amazing as General Zod back in Man of Steel. And now they brought him back, and they brought back the other people who were the other Kryptonians as well. So there was a... They were very non nameless Feora L. She was amazing. So they I don't brought like her any back. Of them. Um, anyway. This made me more excited to see this movie. That part made me less excited. But I, I still like gotta go see it. It looks like a lot of interesting concepts, interesting stuff. Although we have seen this a little bit from the Flash TV the show. Flash yes. TV show is doing the same kind of thing. But anyway, um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Are you gonna go see this in theaters? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna go see it. I'm gonna go see it because it's coming out in June, and yeah, everything's coming out in June. I don't know. This isn't my most anticipated movie for June because I'm looking forward more to Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1. I'm looking forward to that one more because the first one was just amazing. It was the best Spider-Man movie ever made. Maybe this one will be better. Maybe not. Who knows? But I'm looking forward to that. Definitely looking forward to The Flash. I don't know if it's going to be a big success because all the DC movies lately have been flops. Not very good. Well, Suicide Squad was good. The second one. Yeah, The Suicide Squad. The first but, one wasn't as bad as we had remembered. But, <laughs> or you had remembered. But the first one actually made money. The second one flopped hard. But the second one was so good. Yeah. See, that doesn't came out in the thing, middle right? of came oh, out in the much. middle of a pandemic, yeah, the pandemic and was also released day and date on HBO Max in the US and other countries that have HBO Max. We don't have that here in Canada. Well, so, we didn't have a movie theater for most of the time either, so it just flopped hard. Mm. I'm looking forward to I The like Flash. It. I hope it's really good. All accounts are that Andy Muschietti has made a really good movie. It does look like a lot is packed in there. Can't I'm... wait to see Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton both back as Batman. Mm-hmm. Hope it's really good. Is there going to be more surprises? I don't know. Oh, probably. It's like the Spider-Man. There got to be three Batmans, right? Because there's three Spider-Mans. I don't know if there'll be a third Batman, but maybe <laughs> they'll put in another cameo appearance from another was character. Was George Clooney Batman? Yeah, he was. You Batman and Batman. Robin. Is that, is that your favorite Batman movie? No, I think that's one of the worst ones, isn't yeah. it? That's the one people yeah. don't usually like. Well, uh, George Clooney's still around. We can put him in there. I don't think He's you'll get him to come stuff. back to play Batman again. He's but in maybe. copy commercials, for goodness sakes. I think he's employable. <laughs> he's still apologizing for that movie to this day. That was a really lame one. Was that the one with Schwarzenegger in it? Yep, yeah, that's Mr. That Freeze. That's the good. one with the bat credit card. I don't know. It's just, it's just so, bad. It has like a bad remembrance that, in my brain. Okay. Like, Bad spot. That movie is essentially an updated version of the Batman 63 television show or the Batman 66, Batman the movie from 66 because it's so camp. Yeah, it's but just I didn't essentially find it funny a, a, that I remember they, either. No, it's not. It's all these ice puns. It was and terrible. That's all I remember. Lots anyway, of dumb jokes. Nothing wrong with, with like probably the portrayal, but the material was rotten. You know what Good. I mean? And you're you're hoping for George Clooney to return as Batman in the Flash. I'm just saying we There's got been rumors of that. I'm just saying we got three Spider Mans. Yeah. Back. Yeah, we did. So I think we're gonna get three Batmans. Because they've only revealed two. So why spoil two when there has to be a reveal of the third one? Maybe. I haven't looked oh. up the cast list for this, so Maybe we'll have two of the two Alfreds. Or three. I think we'll get uh, Jeremy Irons, Alfred, as well. At, yeah, no, they can't know. bring back. Uh, they can't bring back uh, the other Alfred. I think from the Tim Burton movies. I think he died. Oh dear. Well, we was... might get two Alfreds then. Who played Alfreds all the time? In uh, in 1989. I don't know who played him in 1989. I'm looking up. What was it William Go or something yeah. like that? No, no, no. Okay. I don't know who played Alfred. Well, there was Billy. Remember. Yeah, Michael Go. Oh, I don't recall him. Anyway, I think probably if I saw him. Yeah, I I don't think he's alive well, anymore. Well, we might get a couple of Alfreds. 
Who knows? I don't know. I enjoyed uh I en- I enjoyed uh Jeremy Irons as Alfred. Sure. He just wasn't given much to do. No. They didn't use him very well. I mean, he's a great actor. Yeah, the Sim Michael Rowe. Yeah, he died in 2011. He passed away, unfortunately. Oh. But great oh. actor. And so people remember him from all four of those Batman movies, including Batman and Robin, that you seem to remember um, fondly. Anyway. Okay. That, apart from that aside, looking forward to The Flash. What do you think of The Flash? What do you think of this latest trailer? Let us know down in the comments well, below. It looks like she's interested in it. Maybe. <laughs> Now we got The Haunting of Venice from 20th Century Studios coming out September 15th, the next Hercule Poirot movie. Yeah, now I haven't What'd read this What do you think of this? I, apparently it's, I never heard of that book, but apparently it's a book called Halloween, but I haven't actually read that one. It looks a bit like Scooby-Doo meets Agatha Christie's <laughs> the truth. I don't know. Think so? <laughs> it just did from, it looks a lot like they're trying to like do The Haunting of Hill House meets Poirot and... I don't know, I'm assuming there's some Scooby-Doo in there. Because Agatha Christie is never, she's always been, like, a realistic writer. It's not like, this says she doesn't put ghosts and stuff in her books normally. It says it's classified as a holiday mystery and thriller. Okay, well. What holiday? Labor Day in it's September? It's Halloween. It's about Halloween. Because that was the name of the original book, I guess. I don't know, I haven't read that one. So maybe, I don't know if I should read it now or not. Should I wait? Well, you got time to get it read before September. Yeah, I do, but I'm not sure if I should. Because I, maybe I should read it. Yeah, I'll read it, and then I'll see the characters. It's got Kenneth Branagh, Tina Fey, Jamie Dornan, Michelle Yeoh. Yeah, Michelle Yeoh looks really awesome in it. She's Jeez. playing some kind of, like, uh, someone leading a, uh, what do you call it? When they're trying to bring back the dead. Seance? Seance, yeah, that's what she looks like. It looked kind of lame. Like a weird kind of seance. I think it's all smoke and mirrors. For, yeah, for like that. Scooby-Doo. That's what uh, I was thinking of. I was watching of. this trailer, and I'm sitting there. This is just smoke and mirrors. She's just playing a, she's just playing the showman. Maybe. There's no, there's no she, ghosts Agatha in this. Agatha Christie never, that I remember, wrote about like the supernatural being a real thing. Anyway, it does look, that's what I was thinking, you know. Yeah, could we do a These Perot? last two movies didn't <laughs> blow me away. I wonder if he's going to have a dog in it. <laughs> Why would he have a dog? Could we do. Yeah, Hercule Poirot does not have a dog. I know, but that would be funny. I wonder if Kenneth Brown is getting sick of wearing that ridiculous mustache. Oh, no, it is ridiculous. It's anyway, be itchy. I love the character. I don't know. I, I like the movie, but I've already read those two books, you see? So that was the thing. So that's why I'm not sure if I should read it or not. Well, how old are those books now? Ancient. Yeah, I've, they're I've like read 80 them. years old. Like I read them a while so, ago. A I read, lot of people I think have I read, read them. I read a couple of them. I think I read them twice. A couple mm-hmm. of them. I don't know. I've read a lot of her material. Anyway, yeah. but not this one. Well, let us know if you do read it. You can review it here. I'm going to go see this movie. I mean, I saw Murder on the Orient Express and Death on the Nile. They were good. They didn't blow me away. I think the books are a lot They're not, better uh, as novels. I think it was a lot better. I'm not going back to watch them. Well, once you know, know who did it, it's kind of. But her, I, I think don't the think that's are... the point of it. The point is it. The point of this is you get to see this classic character, yeah. Hercule Poirot, with these in these classic stories up on the screen, and they take some liberties with it, but they try and hold true to the source material as you well know, as they can. I think I, I really enjoyed the television shows better than those movies. I mean, if you want to watch something that you don't know what's happening, that's why you can watch Ryan Johnson's Knives Out movies there on Netflix. I guess, but I really enjoyed like the Puro television series that ended just a few years ago, and the Miss Marple. There's been a couple of Miss Marple. I really enjoyed those. Good. I've enjoyed those more than these movies. So, I don't know. what well, Maybe because they have more time to no. do with the character, they're but not, I have enjoyed them a lot. They're not bad. I the mean, they got series. star-studded cast. They had problems with the cast of the last one there. Oh, yeah. But, but I don't know. I just find, yeah, the television series were more fun for some reason. I really did enjoy them a lot more. I didn't watch it, so I can't yeah. really comment. There was two, like two different ones. There's a Miss Marple series. There was two different actresses, actually, that played Miss Marple. And then... The Piro series was awesome as well. I don't know. I just really thought they were charming. So are you going to go see this? Oh, yeah, I'll go see it. It's A Haunting in Venice. Okay. 
I thought it yeah, was Bell Hunt. I'll go see it. A Haunting in Venice, September 15th. I'll, I'll go listen. see it. You know, I enjoy it. Kenneth Branagh's always really good at oh, what yeah. he does. He's great but at acting. He's great good. at directing. They're well-made movies. I'll go check it out. Are you excited about these? Have you seen either of the other two, Murder on the Orient Express or Death on the Nile? Are you a big fan of Agatha Christie? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. We might read it out on a future episode. Then we got coming out September 1st from Sony, we got Equalizer 3. Yeah. Being directed by Antoine Fuqua again. He's Him and Denzel Washington work together a lot. Oh, do they? Oh. Yeah, I think they did the first two Equalizer movies. Well, it's not my kind of movie. It looks very violent. Uh, but I think it's it's going to be good for that kind of movie. It's just a lot of violence. It's sort of like the good John Wick. Wow. <laughs> These are spaced out. The first one was from 2014. I didn't see that I in theater. I haven't seen either of That's them. where he has that big fight at the end in, uh, in Home Depot. Oh, well, why not? And then the second <laughs> one, he's having a fight in a, this giant storm. I only got 52% critic rating. Guess that people seen didn't like it. I have either of them. But Denzel Washington is always great. Oh, so yeah. if you like kind of a violent movie, this is just not for me. But I think it's going to be done well. And this time it looks like it's overseas somewhere. Yeah, it's in Italy. Is that where it is? Well, okay. it's fighting the mafia, which it we see in the trailer God, there. So I don't know. He's fought everyone he needs to fight in America. And now he's going overseas to Europe to take on the mafia, the right. Italian mafia at that. That's why it reminded me a bit of the first well, John Wick. It says but... this is the final chapter? Why is this the final chapter? I mean, they can keep doing these things. Maybe he'll get blown up this time. I don't know. Maybe. There's a lot of blowing up. Anyway, looks fun. Yeah. Like a violent fighting movie, this the, looks like for The <laughs> thing about you know? these Equalizer movies is he's always taking down everyone very fast and very efficiently. Yeah, it looks very similar so to John he, Wick. So when he says nine choice. seconds, that's all he it right, takes him right, to take down right. that room full of guys. Yeah, yeah. That's how he operates. To me, like, that's not... I don't really like that kind of thing, but I, if it's your thing, it looks like a good one. It's, it's a fun series. I, I enjoyed both the first two. They didn't blow me away, but I enjoyed them. And I'll watch the third one. Why not? Anyone out there big fans of... Equalizer movies or Antoine Fuqua movies, or maybe you're just a big fan of Denzel Washington movies. He's got He's lots great. of great movies. Anyone gonna go check out the Equalizer 3 coming out September 1st? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Love to hear from you. We're back for another segment. Gonna be reviewing the movie Chevalier next. I went to go see this on the weekend and there's a few things I can say about this in non-spoilers. This did come out last year at the Toronto International Film Festival. And so it just came out in limited release here and in other parts of North America. In terms of non-spoilers, just setting it up, it's 18th century France, pre the French Revolution leading into it. Because you know that from the trailer because Marie Antoinette is in it and from the cast list. It's a black man trying to be accepted into French society. He's a, a very talented, brilliant violinist and musician. And it's a story of essentially why, essentially of, yeah, so this man trying to be part of high society in France and be treated as an equal, going, going all the way back to pre-French Revolution. It's, uh, this movie's not going to be for everyone. It's, mm, I mean, the, if you're into classical music, it's got good music on it, great violin music, as well as, you know, other orchestra stuff, because they do whole, like, orchestra concerts, 30-piece orchestras, and there's operas in this, which is all in the trailer. <clears throat> it's not really action-packed. It's a period piece. It's, it's a historic, it's... It's based on history, and it's essentially teaching us a history lesson, and it's teaching us lessons from that time period. That's what this is about. So that movie's not going to be for everyone. I, I, I don't normally enjoy a lot of awards movies. This one was all right, though. I wouldn't say it was blew me away, but it, it kept me, it kept me intrigued the whole time. It was interesting. I'm not really a big fan of this time period. Usually, when it comes to 
18th or before 17th century kind of stuff. I don't enjoy those kind of period pieces that much. It's a very dirty, messy time period. Lots of mud. If I had one complaint about this movie, that would be uh, for the production values. Because the production values are great, but in just the, when they show the streets and everything, it's too clean. I don't think Paris was that clean. Especially when the people are starving and they're about to revolt in the French Revolution. I mean, it would be a lot dirtier than it was. That's uh, They should have dirtied up the sets more. So I don't normally enjoy this, but this was interesting. It kept me entertained for the whole time. You know, it's not something I'm... I don't think I'll ever watch this again. Even if Christine... I just went and saw it by myself. Christine went and saw something else that she's going to review later on. However... Even if she wanted to go see it, I'm not going to go see it with her. It was interesting. It had some good messages in it. Uh, rating, I'd have to give it a... I'd give it a best movie ever, just barely. It wasn't bad. It wasn't... It was quite well made. And so, as an awards movie, it was a lot better than a lot of the other awards movies that I've seen in the last six months or so. What do we got? The Fablemans, Banshees of Inishirin, The Whale, The Sun... I didn't enjoy any of those movies, even though they're all critics are going on about them, but I didn't enjoy any of them for various reasons. That's just me. If you have a different opinion, go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. So that's my thoughts for Spoiler Free on Chevalier. Do you have any thoughts on this? Have you checked it out? Are you going to? Let us know what your thoughts are on this movie down in the comments below, please. We might read it out on a future episode. Now going into spoilers for Chevalier. I mean, the whole time I'm watching it, first off, I'm not really a big fan of the style of the 18th century France. I mean, they got those those cut-off pants. They look like pretty pants that are cut off at the knees. And then they got the white stockings and the, and the heels that everyone's wearing and those god-awful wigs. Man, that's... Uh, I didn't I don't enjoy that at all. I'm surprised they got these actors, especially a black guy, to dress up like this. Oof. Anyway, even anyone wearing that, that takes guts cuz you look ridiculous. So, props to all the people. Now the women in their gowns, they look amazing. I'm not a big fan of the big giant beehive hair that they have, but the gowns and everything, they're gorgeous, you know, and so all the women look great. I mean, the men do have, like, nice jackets on. Not too crazy about the colors. I would have a darker jacket. And then they got nice fancy vests on. It all has to be, like, bright, shiny pastel colors for some reason. See, that's what happens when the monarchy, you know, when the king is dressing like that and then all his court dresses like that, so then everyone in high society wants to dress like that. Uh, some interesting fashion choices they had back then. But... <clears throat> As I was saying, I, I enjoyed the characters. I'm not sure how much of this I actually believe, but this is essentially a story about, what's this man's name? Joseph, hmm, let's see, I got, okay, so he be, he's a ward, the Chevalier is his title that he's a ward in. It's a Chevalier de Marquis something, I don't know, I, I don't know to be French. So he played, so Kevin Harrison Jr., who's great in this, he's the lead, he plays Joseph Bologna. Bologna, I believe, is French. And he is essentially, he's gifted with uh, with these amazing skills as a violinist and for music. So the whole point of this movie is he's trying to be a part of upper French society. Not so much in the court of the monarchy, but, you know, in high society because he's so talented. I mean, the movie starts off with him in as they say, embarrassing Mozart at his own concert, which I don't know if I believe that. Also, if something like that is true, that's a real dick move. You don't go to someone else's show and then do then upstage them. Come on, why, why would you do that? <clears throat> the whole time I'm watching this, apart from thinking like, how did they get this guy to dress up like that? Because he looks so ridiculous. And... I'm sure people made fun of him for it too, but eh, props to him for having the guts to do that. I'm thinking, why would they make this movie now? 
why do why would they make because there's always a reason why they make a movie so why would you make a movie about 18th century pre-revolution pre-french revolution france and about this black man so he's half black half white his father is a his father is white he's french and his mother is black i can't remember where they say they were haiti or dominican republic one of the old french colonies in the caribbean and so, as I'm thinking about it, I'm like, so yeah, the, the Black Lives Matter movement was, was big over the last few years. And so this movie has themes of fighting racism, but not just that. It's also about class conflict, because back in this time, you didn't just have the upper class and then the lower classes. I mean... You had like the upper class, then you have like, and then if you're even if you're part of the royalty's court, the king's court or queen's court, then you were even higher, and then you had the monarchy above that. So it's all about not just who has the money, but who has the most favor with the with the monarchy. And meanwhile, like ninety to ninety five percent of their population is starving to death. Well, you're watching this, and the decadence is just so ridiculous. And is that are they try are the filmmakers trying to draw comparisons to our world today where you know one percenters they have they have ninety percent of the wealth if not more and the rest of us have nothing so very very little and conditions just keep getting worse I don't want to talk about real life but it's definitely highlighting that you know these problems with people who are of a different race trying to integrate into into Western society, there's all these barriers up to them. And so, you know, this was still going on back then. And in terms of in history in, in France, I, I've never been to France. So if anyone from France or knows more about this than me, I mean, because France took over or colonized uh, Algeria, I believe it was, or French Morocco. And they were always considered French citizens, regardless. It was just everyone was French. So how they treated their, their colonial citizens was a little bit different than other imperial powers, especially in the, uh, in the 18th century. So maybe this is, it just really just brings up these things about class struggle how the upper class take everything and like the goal of the, the monarchy is like that they're ordained by God. Okay, they're ordained by God and they believe this so much and that's why they have to rule and only they can rule. Well, if you know your French history, you know what happened to Marie Antoinette and uh, King King Louis the Sixteenth. Jeez. So that's really what this was about for me. And overall, I enjoyed it more than I didn't enjoy it. As I said earlier, it was, it was more interesting than the other awards movies that I saw from last year and early this year. Is this, did it blow me away? No, but it was interesting. If you're interested in this time period or the music, or if you're interested in class struggle, um, and also, you know, this man trying to in trying to insert himself into high society who is definitely from a minority group in France he's the I think he's like the he's one of the very few black people that you see there's a few other I think Haitians in that and they're all like the servants or just the help which yeah that 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 doesn't look good for them but it was a different time period than ours it's hard for uh, it we can't really use our values that we believe today and impose it on something from you know, over 200 years ago, world was a completely different place. So we're always trying to progress further than, and, and get better every time. So that's my thoughts on this movie. Did you see Chevalier? And uh, what do you think? Uh, if you do go see it, let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Love to hear if anyone else heard about this. Now, this is going to be my spoiler review for Beef that I finally finished watching on Netflix. It currently has a 98% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes and an 86% score audience score.
Now, that doesn't mean 98% of, of the critics say this is the most amazing thing ever. It means 98% of them said something good about it. So they could say, this was amazing, or say, yeah, I passed the time, you know, I wasn't bored or anything. That's how Rotten Tomatoes works. So, Stephen Young and Ali Wong, this, it says it's a comedy, but I would, I would argue it's also more of a dramedy. This is about, as I said in my spoiler-free review last episode, this is about two people with anger management issues. And, and this is, this is, I think this is becoming really popular because this is really resonant right now. Because just to describe the, the first little bit of it with the, I mean, I'm spoiling this. So, you know, it all starts off. And if you don't know, what are you watching this for? Okay, I'm going to have the spoiler alert up. So it all starts off with a road rage incident and then it just kind of spirals out of control because they're both the both the characters Ali Wong and Stephen Young's character they're so Danny and Amy they're just having bad days and things aren't going the greatest for them right now so they're just on edge their stress levels are right up here and they're just about to blow and then suddenly there's this road rage incident and it doesn't go well and it starts spiraling out of control and these and as soon as these people with anger issues get mad they just completely lose control and they're all impulse and they're like they're just I'm gonna make that person suffer no matter what all because of because of what because you almost hit someone because someone got honked at really what, what do you need to do this for that's that's not how we behave in society and the problem is with the pandemic and everything, this is why this is resonating so much because everyone feels like this all the time. I feel like this all the time. It's as if over the pandemic, we were locked up. We just lost our ability to behave normally in public. And now all the time, I'm just angry constantly. And you know how I know this affects everyone? Because I see it all the time, man, because I'm the worst one. It's not, this is every, it's just not one of those things, everyone's stupid except me. No, I'm the worst one at this. I'm constantly upset and want to road rage all the time. This is the kind of stuff I would want to do. I just don't do it. Because these people are clearly, you know, there's some kind of breakdown. There's some kind of thing. They've lost that voice that has said, no, don't get into a car chase down the road and destroy property. Don't look up, don't track someone down by their license plate number. Don't run a scam on them and pee all over their washroom and then bef and then befriend their husband as a okay, as another way of getting back at you while the other is oh my goodness, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And at first I didn't like the time period jumps because things are going on and then suddenly it's six months later so Danny's now all in into the church and everything the evangelical church which you know that's great that he found that kind of stuff that's not my thing but if that helps him and it helps him control his anger that's a good thing um so I I just it just keeps getting out of control and you know, in a way, this is kind of showing us this is how we want to behave. And but we shouldn't we shouldn't do that. So I think that's what this this year, the message from the showrunners is saying. It's like, yeah, we need to we need to control ourselves. We can't be all acting on impulse and instincts and just let rage take over because it gets out of control fast. And I think that's the premise of this show is that. What if we took that and ju it just kept going? We just kept upping it until eventually, like, uh, one's involved with kidnapping and, the, like, someone else could be shot dead? Jeez. Um, so good. So good. That's my thoughts on it. Uh, there were a lot of funny moments in it, but I would say it was more drama. I mean, some of the funniest moments for me was when those two idiots who work for the... Uh, the cousin Isaac, they broke into Amy's house, and her mother-in-law is there and comes after him with a gun. I'm like, that was pretty hilarious. <laughs> they were scared shitless. <laughs> what else is there? 
I mean, the, the last the last couple of episodes are just. I don't know if I found them very funny. They were just really heavy and. So, whew. um, there's so much in this. I might have to go back and rewatch it, cause it was. It wasn't convoluted, it's just, it's a lot, and when you're binging things, that's what happens when you binge something over a few days, and you can't remember it. Remember we used to do this all the time with the Netflix uh, uh, Daredevil and the other uh, Defender series stuff. We'd binge it, and then I'm like, I can't remember it, and I still can't remember most of them, except for some of the first season, because I watched it more than once. But I'll probably have to go back and watch it sometime, but... Not as fast as I did because I was trying to get through it. Once again, I don't like the binge model. I prefer the weekly model. Let me know what your thoughts are on Beef on Netflix. I think it's great. I give it best series ever. Are they bringing it back for another season? I don't know. I haven't heard anything or read anything on that. If I do, I'll check it out. Or if you know something, leave me a comment down below as well as let me know what you thought of this show. Next, last one I'm going to review is Barry. Oh, this one might even be better than Beef because, although Beef, like, that's gold standard right there, but Barry might be even better because it's HBO. Uh, this is going to be a spoiler review for Barry Season 3. Oh, sorry. Season 4, Episode 3. So, spoiler review. If you're If you're still watching this, that's on you. If you haven't started watching Barry, start watching Barry. It's great. It's so good. Whatever it is, can't find the time, find the time. You're not going to regret it. Episode 3 is called You're Charming. Hank and Cristobal meet Toro, who apparently is the guy that they're hiring. Because now they have to kill Barry. Because they found out that Barry is talking to the FBI. And Barry is... Man, he's messed up. And it really shows in this episode, not just how he's messed up, but how he's only out for himself. Okay? He wants his girlfriend, Sally. He wants Sally to be with him. And she said, she said that, that he feels, that she feels safe when she's with him. And that was last episode. Now... He's using that to say, yeah, of course, she, she must love him, which I don't think that's the case at all. But she's, we saw her parents the previous episode. She's being treated like crap by them. Damn. So Barry's working with them. Mostly what I remember was the end of this when, oh, well, let's see what we got here. Hank, they meet with Toro, who has hired two men to kill Barry who in turn is trying to get himself and Sally relocated under witness protection. Hank then shares his news with Fuchs. O'Neill visits Barry in prison and asks him about Gene, sending him into a rage when he learns what Gene said about him. O'Neill then visits Moss, who terrorizes him to speaking only German. Yeah, so that's the... Uh, he visits with the dad of the, the dead black woman, and that's the... Uh, O'Neill is the uh, the Vanity Fair reporter that Henry Winkler, the acting coach, gave a whole one-man play about his story. So he talks to the press, and now everyone's mad at him. So Moss, the, the, the girl's dad, she scares the, he scares the crap out of him, and everyone's mad that... Uh, Henry Winkler is talking to everyone. So now they're all going after him. Assassins are going after Barry. Meanwhile, Barry Barry calls Hank at the end. And man, that phone conversation, like all Barry is about, he's like, he's just attacking him. He's like, you got to do this for me because I want it done. Okay. No, I'm not talking to anyone. I don't sell you out. And he's just lying about everything. Because it doesn't matter what he says. Because it's all about him. He has to have this. And it just really shows that this guy has really just gone downhill. The whole series. Which is... And yeah, this is great. Because it was more comedy before. But I'm not finding much comedy now. Now the comedy just becomes drama and it just becomes so serious. 
And this goes back to why they say that if comedy actors make gr make really good uh, drama actors. Who is this directed by? Oh, Bill Hader is directing some of these? Oh, he's directing all of them. Wow. How is he doing that and, and still acting in the show? I guess this is his show. I didn't know that. He's writing some of them, too. Man, what an amazing show. There he is. We got five more episodes to go. So I'm going to be watching them. Unfortunately, I can't watch them on Sundays because these don't debut until 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, which is 11.30 here in, in this part of Canada, as I call it, Newfoundland. So, man, I'm just going to be reviewing them on, uh, on Monday. But, <clears throat> anyway, if you've been watching Barry, let me know your thoughts on it. I think it's great. If you don't like it, let me know why you don't like it. Maybe I'm missing it, or maybe I'm just... I said, but it's got really high ratings. It's 99% critic rating on Rotten Tomatoes currently, and a 91% audience score. Damn. That's, uh, once again, it's HBO. And as good as Beef was, yeah, this is even better, so... Yeah, some great television on right now. Let me know your thoughts on Barry. It's on HBO. If you don't have it and you've watched this, well, it doesn't matter. Go get HBO because you're, you're going to want to watch this. Let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments below, please. Thank you for watching. Our next segment, we're, uh, for next review, you're going to review Bo is Afraid. This yes. came out last weekend, and you saw it last weekend when I went to go see Chevalier. Yep. I, uh, I chose that. not to, because this, this Bo is Afraid is 2 hours 59 minutes long. Well, and I thought that out, was too long. It worked out for me. Actually, we ended up getting out of our movies at the same time in the end. Yep. But, uh, yeah. Mine was much shorter. I must say, this is, I'm going to say, the worst movie I have ever seen wow so the it currently worst. has a 70 percent critic rating on rotten tomatoes and a 73 percent audience score this is from director ari aster i didn't it go is, see this because i refuse to see this guy's movies now it is bad so bad that people got up and left it says it's and a comedy drama was it funny I, there was a couple of kind of humorous oh, is this humorous. a spoiler or non-spoiler review oh this is going to be spoiler because i'm telling you okay, people spoilers. do not waste your money when i got out of the movie i almost wanted to tell the staff to rip down the poster and stop showing this movie mm. okay it's that bad i almost felt like i was ripped off of my money like stop showing it people literally got up and left in the middle of the show and did not come back they did not come back mm-hmm it was so bad. It also has bad undertones in the movie. It has kind of incel type of tones. Mm -hmm. It seems to be anti-women. It really has a bad message. It's just awful. Did you ever see any of his other movies? No, Hereditary but I don't think this Midsommar? one is like them. It's not a horror movie. There's no horror in it. Um, other than kind of creepy stuff. But, it's disturbing uh, images, isn't it? No, it's not. That's the thing. It's not disturbing. It's not. It's just bloody boring. Boring? It's, it's about a guy who, he's a man-child. He cannot seem to function properly in society. And, of course, that has to be his mother's fault. She is to blame for everything, of course. Mm -hmm. Even though he lives in her building, his mother is extremely successful, and he cannot function, and he cannot do anything, basically. And he blames it all on his mother, and he has to go to therapy. And it's all, it's all his mother's fault. Does and he then, take any responsibility for his own life? No, he's a complete... He acts like a four-year-old. Okay? But he's like 50. Mm -hmm. It's really bad. Um, he peaks at age 13. There's a lot of flashbacks to when he was 13. He is just 
awful. And the things in the movie that happen are ridiculous. And either it's either number one, it's some kind of dream he's having. I don't think so, though. Number two, he's just, this is how he perceives the world because he's so messed up. He perceives everyone's out to get him. All because of his mother. And at one point, he's so strange, he gets kidnapped by this lovely family because their son died in the war. Which and, uh, war? Some kind of war. Okay. He's an American soldier. He died in Afghanistan or something. And they like run him over by mistake and they kidnap him. Anyway, that is the only kind of interesting part of the movie. It's awful. Then he runs into these actors in the woods. And then in the end, it's a whole... He actually does like kill his mother. The thing throws her into a reptile. Vivarium. Anyway, I don't know. But then, and then in the end, she's back. And she dies. She comes back. She dies. She, he sinks in the boat. and It's just awful. That's all I'm going to say. It's awful. Do not waste your money on this movie. So you don't recommend it then? No. 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 I don't recommend you watch uh, Midsummer or Hereditary there's either because they're terrible. They're supposed to be disturbing. There's nothing disturbing about this. It's just ridiculous. I mean, there's a tiny bit of blood in it. There's and it's three like hours that. long. It's terrible. Okay. Yeah. Most people I walked out once he got kidnapped by the nice people. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah. <laughs> That's all I can say. It's just bad. Okay. I wasn't going to go see it anyway, but that's it's my terrible. own personal bias. If anyone out there has a different opinion, or if you agree with Christine, let us know your thoughts on this movie, Bo is Afraid, from uh, A24 and director Ari Aster. Oh my I'm not going to go see it, but it's apparently like, Christine's saying don't go watch it. It's almost like a crime against theater. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a few movies like that, and his previous well, movies were I like that too. Theater. For me, mm. okay. What is our next review? Oh, because we got a suggestion from a viewer. Thank you very much. We watched Coherence yes. from twenty twenty three. A much better movie than Bo is Afraid. It's a <laughs> low budget science fiction movie. It's it was fantastic. I really enjoyed so it. So let's do. Non spoilers and then and then spoilers. Well, I don't think we need spoilers. I think it was really great. It's from 2013. Really... We can talk about it as well, much. Well, no as we one want. else has seen it probably either because I'd never heard of it. So I don't think we should spoil it, it because we want people to watch it. It currently has 88% certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes critic rating and 81% score. So that's some pretty really good an scores. It's really interesting, interesting film. I really recommend it. It's got a lot of interesting things in it. it has some astronomy. Yeah, I mean, what happens, I don't think, the correlation in the movie between what's happening in the sky and what's happening in real life is not really a thing, but it doesn't matter. You just have to go with it. Yeah, so essentially, it's it. it's just about a group of people, and it's a science fiction premise. It's definitely science fiction, but they don't spend a lot of money on visual effects or anything, and they don't need to. No, no. In fact, what they did for the, the one... There's a color scheme, and what they did for that was quite clever, it's I thought. It's fun. I thought it was And really cheap to do. Fun and an interesting watch. Now, it's got Xander from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I never watched. The, uh, the I one, do recognize some of the actors in The it. main guy from the Scooby Gang, who, when that series first started, I think they were all supposed to be 16. This guy's at least 10 well, years Well, one of the older. guys plays himself in the movie. It's usually. He plays himself. Anyway. Okay, so Xander's in it from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Name. And then a pair, and then the other main lead, the female lead, I don't know what her name is. Apparently it's, uh, you know who this is? This is no. Melanie Jolie, who's the current Minister of Foreign Affairs in Canada. Looks exactly like her. I didn't know she was acting in 2013. It's not her. What are you saying that for? It's not her It at looks all. exactly like her. Oh, no. Actress's name Stop is it. Emily Baldoni. Unless that's your, maybe her you gotta stage get some name. Glasses. Anyway, it's a great movie. You guys watch it and then tell us what you think. And where where did we find it? Where could we? Where it was on Prime. It? it was on Prime. So there you go. Prime, on so Android. I checked it out. I had a, I at first I'm watching this and I'm just, what is this? You know, I'm, I'm okay. So some spoilers here now. It's just a bunch of group of people. They're getting together. I think they're all friends. Some of them are couples. Some of them are ex couples in that. 
and they're sitting around and they're having a meal, right? I think that's all we need to. Don't say any more because you're going to spoil it. That's what I said. Spoilers. No, oh no, I didn't want to spoil it. Don't spoil it. Why not? Let people watch it and then come back and tell us what they thought of it. Okay. Yeah. I'll see what the, what does the movie info say on it? Anyway. Eight friends at a dinner party experience a troubling chain of events due to the malevolent influence of a passing comet. It reminded me a little bit of that film that we saw with the guy that played the doctor in Enterprise. Robert about... Picardo? No, in Enterprise. Oh, I, I don't remember Enterprise. That one about so fell Jesus? Asleep watching the one it. about Jesus? Was that the one? You're talking about the Christ? The Passion of the Christ? No, no. It was one where they are in a house in New Mexico and they're talking and one of them is Jesus or something. Do you recall that? Yeah, one? I can't remember the name of that movie. That yeah, was another yeah, yeah. low budget science fiction movie, but Kinda definitely a science fiction of that one. Yeah, I don't remember what it was called. I think at first I was watching it and there was some weird editing and I didn't like it. I thought there was a problem with the editing, but it turns out they were doing it on purpose. So you kind of got to stick with it. It's only an hour and 29 minutes. Yeah, so it's yeah, not long. Fun. I, at first I was, I'm just kind of, this hasn't really told me what this was about. So at first I, it took me a little bit to get into it. Mm -hmm. I think after like 20, 25 minutes, I'm like, okay, this is going somewhere now. It just took a while to get going for me, for me. But overall, I enjoyed this movie. What kind of rating would you give this? Oh, I'd give it like an 8 out of 10. If we're 8 out of 10? It was fun. It's not I something I'm going to watch again, movie. but it was entertaining. So I'll give it a best movie ever. Yeah, yeah. Game. I thought it was really entertaining. I yeah. liked it. Much Maybe. better than Bo is Afraid, I can tell you that. Is that going to be your standard now to measure everything from? Was everything it better? is better than Boa Afraid. Superman, that terrible, crappy movie, is like ten times better than Boa's Afraid. Man of Steel, that's a great movie for me. I really enjoyed it. it. I mean, this Boa's Afraid. So is... that that suggestion came from Sean on YouTube. Thank so thank you, you very much for that suggestion, Sean. That and was fun. We checked it out. I had a good yeah, time with it. Me too. If anyone else has any other suggestions for stuff they want us to review. Right. Um, yeah, we won't spoil this. Well, anyway, check it out. Check out Coherence. It's currently on Prime oh, here in Canada, yeah. so it should be on Prime I in other countries. I enjoyed it. I thought it was really interesting. Let us know your thoughts on this movie down in the comments below, please. Our next review is You've Been Watching a Lot of Succession on HBO. Well, I started this. We started the show. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. We got one episode in and we couldn't get any further. And then I tried it again. And I got maybe two episodes in, and I didn't get any further. I think I tapped out after the second episode. Yeah. I was there, no. But I, because I didn't have time or something, I, I was just so busy. Anyway, so I thought I'm gonna watch the show. So mm -hmm. I started watching it, and I really did enjoy enjoy it. It does grow on you. Um, it has some really funny parts in it, which you, you probably won't believe that. No, um, I wouldn't. But believe it does. That. Like I laughed out loud a few times. People and never stop swearing. It's f bomb swear all much. the time. Yeah, they they're seem, all terrible people. They seem like trailer trash, but they they're have all, all this money. Terrible people. It currently has a <laughs> on Rotten Tomatoes. It's currently rated ninety five percent critic score yeah. and eighty nine percent audience score. It's good. Well, that's high ratings, but not I mean, everyone's loving it. Well, because it's all it's all about the same thing every season, every episode. It's the ins and out of a family. And instead of a family that, you know, you would say see a family. And normally you look at a family if you're going to do a show about them. And when they get married, when they have kids, they come over for supper on Sundays. You know, that would be kind of stuff that you would see about a family. No, not in this show. It's all about the business. No, they hate each other. And it's all about the father who is a Conrad Black, Rupert Murdoch a little bit of Trump thrown in there mixture. Well, there's, um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, influences in yeah, that. I found that from the first couple episodes. Uh, a lot of Conrad back and like the backstory of him and stuff. Anyway, he's uh, not a very good guy. And he basically has ruined his children. You're talking about Brian his, Cox. Yeah, from his parenting. The dad. He's like scared them all. And they all have giant issues one some show it more than others well he's not a very nice dude uh, <laughs> and uh he's a very kind of a bad person and they're all vying for the dad's approval essentially yeah so it's they can take over the about. business it's all not about even succession about taking about it's not even almost about that it's like 
being the right hand man of him. Everybody and everybody revolves around him, and you can't say anything bad around him or them too. And, and you know, and all these people, and like they never even they're in these beautiful, beautiful places and these fabulous. And you enjoyed um, experiences, watching this? And they never, like, really comment on how great it is. Like, they're just still doing the same thing. So focused on this terrible mm -hmm. business thing. They don't really seem to know how to live life properly at all. It's a communications business, isn't it? And no, it's a company that owns a lot of people, but a lot of different businesses. But their main business is the, it's like Fox. It's yeah, like it's a Fox. communications business. Well, no, but they have so lots it's of media. No, they have lots of other things, and that's what it's all about: acquiring different businesses, and they want to get into tech and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, um, basically, yeah, I, I can't go into all the details about it, but uh, so they're all looking for the dad's approval, and the dad, of course, plays on that, and he's an awful guy, and he always like will get give them just a tiny little hint of affection. Um, and always away from the other children so that they get jealous or they, you know, mm -hmm. he's always doing that. Well, if you want them to be jealous, you would do it in front of the other kids. No, no, but he does it in a way that's like always like, you know, but he's, and half the time he's like senile. He's like out of it because he gets really sick. Yeah, that's how the show starts. And he's making starts. like really big decisions. The first episode he's in yeah, his yeah. mansion and at night and he's starts. peeing in the corner because yeah, he can't yeah, find yeah. the washroom. And, and he, so he kind of gets out of it mind is gone. a few times. But he's not, his mind is good at the end. Spoilers. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just, it's all about this company and the things that the children go through essentially. And the children and Greg. The children are actually adults. <laughs> and yeah. Greg. I, I think the youngest the one is, is in his late 20s, and, maybe, or early 30s. And Tom is one of their the husbands, essentially about them. And then there's the the wolves that circle them that work in the in the company. Mm -hmm. They're just terrible people. Um, yeah, so it's all about that. And... Uh, I won't, I don't want to spoil it now but if you're trying to get caught up watching it. But the last season, the way that it ends is really something else. I had heard that there was a really different way of ending the show. Mm -hmm. I'd heard that and I wasn't sure how they were going to do it, but it really surprised me how they did it and it, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, don't watch it if you don't like swearing. Yeah, or... they're constantly swearing and just. Saying a lot yeah. of really terrible well, things. Well, especially Colkin. Uh, yeah, the youngest says one. A lot of really bad things because he, he's like the most scarred or obviously scarred of by his he's father. He's the baby. His father hit him apparently in everything. Like, mm -hmm. and his brother and sister used to lock him in a cage or something. I mean, the guy is like really scarred, and it really shows. But the other kids are just as scarred, but they're, it's not. They're as all obvious. terrible people. That's what yeah, I got from it. Anyway, it's very interesting, and the ins and outs of it, especially yeah. Anyway, there's a lot of relationships, a lot of characters going on, and uh, yeah, I thought it was really, I thought it was really well done. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to spoil it. No, or I'm not spoil, spoil anymore. It. No, I'm not spoiling anymore. Okay. Yeah, watch it if you. If you don't like swearing, don't watch it. <laughs> I, I hear it all the time, just these people swearing in the yeah. house as you're watching it. Everybody comes up the stairs and says, what are you watching? Yeah, there's a lot of swearing. They're always yelling like at each other, swearing, too. But it's, it has to be part of this. These people would swear. They are the kind. It's not like, no, this is who they would be. Okay. Essentially. Anyway, I totally enjoyed it. I really thought it was great. I don't know if this show this show isn't, you know, number one on TV, but it has a, a loyal fan base. And it's HBO, so they make it's good stuff. So well written. Like I give it like a ninety two for sure. It was it's only about one the only thing is the reason it's only about one topic though. That's the thing. I it, yeah. It's only about one little world. Um, so it doesn't get into anything else, but how they do it is very really good. And they, did they end it on a good note, or was it dragged out like other no, shows? No, no, the ending is excellent. How they yeah. ended the whole, they ended it in a season, essentially. The season is the ending. Yeah, the final um, season. It's like the whole thing is about the ending. Anyway, I, I, can't, I don't want to give it away, but it was, okay. I'll tell you later what happened. Anyway, sure. it's really good. I totally, I totally recommend it. Anyone out there enjoying Succession on HBO, 
Uh, it wasn't for me, so I already gave my thoughts on this when I checked it out months ago with you. Christine went back. She seemed to have a good time. Did anyone else uh, stick with it for a bit, or did you did you not care for it? Let us know down in the comments below, please. Now, you wanted to do another review for The Night Agent, Season 1 on Netflix. Yeah, I watched this over the holiday with my mom. It's come out recently? Yeah, it just came out. At that, when we watched it, it was like number two in Canada or something. It's a really fun show. It's uh, about spy stuff. I'm not going to spoil it because it's the kind of thing you definitely don't want to spoil. It's about spy stuff. It's about... It's just really fun. It's an action thriller. It's a fun watch. I know we enjoyed it. It's not like monumental. It doesn't blow your mind. But it's a fun spy thriller. Let's see what the series info says. Based on the novel by Matthew Quirk, The Night Agent is a sophisticated character-based action thriller centering on a low-level FBI agent who works in the basement of the White House, manning a phone that never rings. Yeah. Sounds like a boring job. It Until is. the night that it does, <laughs> propelling him into a fast-moving and dangerous conspiracy that ultimately leads all the way to the Oval Office. Yeah, it's, it's like, you are you never know who the good person, who the good guy is, and who the bad guy is. And that's what makes it it's interesting. It's currently rated, critic rating 75% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 76% audience score. I think it's better than a 76. I'd definitely give it, like, an 85 or something. It's just all about just this one thing. But it's got a lot, it makes you think you're trying to figure out who's the bad guy mm -hmm. and who's a lot of people get killed in it so don't get too attached to anybody <laughs> that's the only spoiler i'll say but i thought it was fun and we enjoyed it it was it was it gets some parts oh yeah when you have got a lot really, of action in it yeah and when it got really really suspenseful was when you called me <laughs> oh yeah when someone's hiding in the closet if anybody's seen it and then gregory calls me i'm like what is he calling me right now i got it like <laughs> They're in the closet. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, it was fun, though. We had to pause it, and then we had to wait. So, like, the suspense was, like... <laughs> okay, so, actually, I might have made the series better then for you. Yeah, maybe then, yeah. <laughs> what rate? What kind of rating would you give this? I'd give it for sure, like, I don't know, 86. 87. I just thought it was fun. It was... it was fun, and it kept you guessing. It wasn't obvious. Ten episodes... And you had so I guess you guys binged it. Yeah, we watched it over the week that I was there. Yeah. It was fun. No. Nope. I haven't checked it out. It's not something that grabbed my attention when I was watching the Netflix April preview. We'll do the May preview. That should be out now, so maybe we'll do that in a couple of days then. Okay. We'll review that. But has anyone else out there checked out The Night Agent on Netflix? That doesn't sound like a good name. Sounds like a terrible eighties name. No, it's, a night it's, it's agent. Uh, basically a guy has to sit there, yeah, basically. In... As a security guard. No. Except he's an FBI no, agent. No, no, it's a, it's a line to agents in okay. the field. It's a spy line. If a spy gets in trouble, that's what the phone is for. Okay, so he's there just in case. He's not Q, but he's like, I don't know a guy like that they need to if they're in the field and they yeah, get in he's trouble. the backup well he's he's the he's the guy they call to get help i guess <laughs> all right all right let us know your thoughts on the night agent on netflix if anyone else has checked it out you didn't want to spoil that did you no i'm not going to spoil it because it's got so many ins and outs i definitely don't want to spoil that okay okay we're finally back for another episode of our segment, Into the DCEU. So we took a little bit of a break because you went away to go visit family there. So that's cool. So we're going to just continue on with that now. So Into the DCU, we did our first one. What was the first one? The Superman movie. Man of Steel, 2013. And then we did Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice from 2016. Now we're doing... David Ayer's Suicide Squad from 2016 as well. I remember this came out during the summer and BVS came out, uh, I think it was in February or March. All around the same time, these two events. Well, it came out that time and then this one came out like six months later or so during the summer, I believe. Yeah. So, how would you like to do this? Would you like to go first and do your ranting or would you like me to say my, uh, 
my review of this movie first, and then you can you rant about talk. as much as you want afterwards. I don't have any ranting on this one. You talk about it first. Okay. When I first saw this movie, I wasn't impressed. I saw this once in the theater, so this was only my second viewing. Now, why I wasn't that impressed, you know... <laughs> Maybe it's because of how they copied transform the recent Transformers in it, and they changed things around. Now, there was a whole lot of drama about how this movie got made and the final cut of it, but we're not going to get into that. We're just talking about this movie. So overall, though, this is going to be a spoiler review, by the way. All these are spoiler reviews because oh, they're old movies. Um, so I'm not going to put that up, but it'll be in the title for this video. I had a fun time watching this one, so I made some notes. I try to do like pros and cons. Now I have a lot more cons, I realize. Well, not a lot more, but a few more than I have pros. So here's the things that I didn't really like about this movie. I didn't really enjoy Will Smith as Deadshot. That was, I mean, he's trying, he's getting his own storyline in that with his daughter and that because he's Will Smith, but nothing about that character really interested me. And no matter what Will Smith did with it, uh, we only get one trick shot from Deadshot, and that's at the beginning when we first see him. And he has to make that trick shot to for his. Uh, He's not as effective as who who was the original Deadshot that we saw previous. He was way more you talking convincing. Of, I don't remember who it was, but he was way more menacing. You talking about the other Suicide Squad movie? No, Andrew Salvo was plus what Punisher. Yeah, yeah, and the Punisher. Well, the Punisher is not supposed to be about trick shots and everything. No, no, but we've seen Deadshot before. Was it in the Arrow? Oh, it was in Arrow. Yeah, yeah. we saw it in Arrow, that and was, it was way better. He was way more menacing. I don't really recall who played him, but it was just a way more menacing character. Okay. So I didn't really get that. And only one trick shot, because Deadpool is supposed to be all about uh, trick shots. Will Smith with his daughter storyline, eh, I'm not into that. Jared Leto is the Joker. Don't just, like it at like all. Jared Leto. I don't like Jared Leto and I don't like his Joker. But that's just me. If you enjoyed it, don't let me uh, stop you from that. Uh, I didn't enjoy this version of Killer Croc. This isn't Killer Croc. He's supposed to be like a big, like giant monster. Like, like what um, big? what's that shark guy? Shark boy. I don't know. Lava girl. No, from um, <laughs> from Suicide Squad. There. Oh yeah, yeah. Big Can't remember cat guy. I can't remember his name off I the top know. of my head, but Listen, this version of Killer Croc should have been much. a big, should have been, yeah, he didn't, and he was just a big guy with a skin condition who they turned into a monster. I didn't like that. Rather severe skin they condition. They use this, okay, <laughs> they form the Suicide Squad as it comes to know. It's called Task Force X, and they use it as a deterrent for Superman. I don't really see how this team could take on Superman. Only Enchantress could take on think... Superman. The rest of them would be quite Unless useless it isn't really specific to superman it's more like hypothetical what if superman was bad what defense does earth have i think that's more of how she sells this, it this she's selling the team to these politicians yeah i do right? but she needs to this is varying power levels here and that wasn't a very that's good all reason, they got okay dead shot at the shooting range that didn't impress me that was boring enchantress releases her brother Okay, and their the brother, the big CGI guy, that looked dumb. The big orange and black yeah, CGI guy, like that looked ridiculous. Slipknot, no intro, no story. It's just here's Slipknot. He's yeah, part of the team. Okay, They're he fun. just shows up. Okay, and then they kill him. And everyone knew Slipknot was cannon fodder because he was hardly in any of the promotional material, and he wasn't. He was hardly in any of the trailers. So everyone's right. like, he's the cannon fodder that they're gonna kill. Now I'll get to that in a second. I didn't like that. Rick Flag is holding a tablet from Amanda Waller, and it's like, here, she's gonna talk to you about this stuff. That was kind of dumb. Uh, no backstory for Katana. She just shows up as well. Captain Boomerang only throws three boomerangs in the whole movie. He doesn't do very much. Okay, he's pretty funny. Okay, and I that's one but of the I things I'd really like see about. What but he throws is. he throws one when Slipknot's getting away, and then he catches it when Katana's got him with it with her sword. I can throw he a throws, boomerang too. He throws the camera one that gets destroyed, and then he throws one exploding one at I the don't at, know. at the. Big brother His guy. to me is not really that good. I don't know. Anyone can throw okay. a boomerang. Then the way Slipknot <laughs> was blown up, he's just got like a cell phone on his arm and he's just like click on the cell phone and the guy's head blows up. That was rather unimpressive. Yeah, what if you like butt out one of these They things? fixed that in the, in the sequel. If you haven't seen any of these things. Why didn't it show the city evacuation? Like suddenly like they... 
they show up and they're like, where are all the people? Like, no, they did evacuate, though. But they, they didn't show to anything. Show it, but at least they, they admitted they evacuated. Not just, like some of these other movies where there's three people left in town and they're the main no, characters. All you got to do is put 30 seconds of uh, police and evacuation and everything as soon as that big garbage ring goes into the sky. <laughs> uh, the googly monsters, no one likes those things there. Enchantress makes out with people, turn them into googly monsters. So is she making out with like hundreds of people to turn them into these googly monsters? Because that's how she turns. Oh, like... She makes she makes out with them in order for them to become these things. That was not good. Uh, Harley Quinn elevator scene, didn't need that. The building fight scene didn't serve much purpose except to get uh, El Diablo to finally start using his fire powers. But it was kind of a waste. By the way, we watched the theatrical version. There is an extended version. I'm that's, glad we didn't uh, watch that. But we didn't watch that. Hold on. How much longer is it? Oh, God. This would be a pro. This, this would enough. be a con if, if I did watch it. It's an extra 11 minutes. Yeah, I didn't need an extra 11 minutes of this. Maybe would have been talking about Slipknot. Because they seem to totally like uh Why is Amanda Waller shooting movie? her employees? That doesn't seem that didn't like a very make good. Any sense at all. Why are they rescuing Amanda Waller? Like, didn't even explain what really they just she kind of brushed over why she's still there. Rec- she didn't need. Okay. No one was there. Waller threatens the squad with her cell phone. She does it more than once. It's like, don't get, I got my cell phone here? <sighs> why Deadshot miss on purpose? That didn't make any sense when yeah, uh, when Harley Quinn. I guess he's he's got their me. friends now, but it kind of seemed out of place for that character. Especially when he could have easily, he should have just gotten everything that he wanted. That guy would have definitely done that. Uh, the weird Joker voice that Jared Leto was doing? Nope. He wasn't really doing that much. Okay, then they have to get Waller twice because her helicopter goes down. I'm like, guys, what are we doing here? Too she much CGI. At, she just would have stayed there. Too much CGI at the end with Enchantress. I mean, Cara Delevingne, she's doing her like flippity that floppity was really thing. really dumb. Okay. Which was fine, but all the CGI. Too yeah. much talking. Why is Flag so hung up on June Moon? I'm like, why is this guy, like, he's like going on that this woman is everything to him. I'm like, well, I guess it's because the, she's the Enchantress, but they could have. They should have. like the Enchantress. He likes the other one. The character is still called the Enchantress, but I don't think this guy would be so head over heels for this woman. I didn't buy it. They didn't make they didn't make me buy that, that love story, problem. and they didn't make it magic from the Enchantress. So it just seemed dumb to me. The bar scene stops the movie dead with a bunch of lame jokes. Oh, that was stupid. And where the soldiers go during this time? Because they were with them. They go into the bar, and then when they come back out, they got more soldiers with them. Where were the soldiers? We got taken. Were they drinking over. at a different bar? No, they took the V team and they rock. Okay, flag, bl- flag breaks the cell phone. He's like, I'm not blowing up any more heads. That was I dumb. Crocs that. scuttle into the water. Everyone hates that. Uh, Katana suddenly t- talking to her sword out of nowhere. It's like, okay, so well, it's her husband get now. get a little bit of a backstory about her during yeah. the movie. Oh, and I put down that anything. Enchantress all flippity-floppity. Nah, that was really that was stupid. Dumb. Weird secret wish visions that they all have to have at the end when they're confronting uh, Enchantress. Do we really need that? Big CGI battle at the end. Yeah, too much CGI. It's just, it's not interesting. Why was there a ring of floating garbage? They never really explained that. I guess it was part of the magic. Final fight with Enchantress is not good. Yeah, it is definitely not good. It's mostly just fog and smoke, so you can't see anything. Uh, then she just disarms them with a wave of her hand. So why was she fighting them anyway? Was she just bored? Uh... Croc just shows up out of the end, and then suddenly, uh, and suddenly he's there. Harley Quinn cuts out the heart. Croc has a bomb, and Deadshot shoots it all in slow mo. No, no, I didn't need that. End scene with Flag ripping up Enchantress's heart, and he's so heartbroken. I didn't buy it. Uh, Waller threatens them with her cell phone again, and Waller knows Batman's identity. They're supposed to. Not everyone's supposed to know these guys' secret identity. They didn't handle this well in the DCU. Everyone should know who Superman is. Everyone knows who Batman is. Everyone knows who the Flash is. And wonder. Uh, I, I don't, think in this they, one they, they didn't do that very well. Introducing the characters a little better than they did in the okay. previous one. Now, here are the things I liked about it. Here's what was good: the soundtrack. I liked a lot yeah, of the songs the in this. Soundtrack. That was fun. Viola Davis as Amanda Waller. She's great in a bad movie. Well, let's say. 
It is a bad movie, but I still had fun with it. Reminds me of Black Adam a bit. That's just me. I like Black Adam better. The Superman funeral flashback. I mean, the, it does connect it to the previous movie, so that, I didn't mind. I thought that was an interesting way of doing it. David Harbour appearance. He's barely in this movie, but... No, he doesn't he's, do much. He he's, could have been anybody. He's good, but it was nice to see him in a big movie. Now, they're supposed to be in... I can't remember the name of this fake city in the DC Universe... But it's all shot in Toronto. Right, and I'm he's like, doing DC and Marvel. Oh. Yeah. He's a, he's a double agent. More, they call that walking between the worlds. And more and more people are doing that now. So it's great. So we might get like Henry Cavill in the MCU. Or Oh, God. But, let's just get rid of Henry Cavill, please. What do you got against this guy? He's too mopey. Okay. Ben Affleck Batman appearance at the beginning. And he takes down Deadshot. I enjoyed that. Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, she's really good. She's owning that role. And then we get Harley Quinn origin flashbacks at the beginning and then later on as well. We get the rest of the comic book storyline called Mad Love. All that looked good. They could should have had more of that in the movie, even if it's Jared Leto as Joker. Batman ruins date night. That was funny. And then, because uh, as soon as Batman shows up, Joker's like, I'm out of here. Okay, we're done. Uh, what we got here? Jai Courtney as Captain Boomerang. That's a perfect role for him. I would have wanted to see more of that. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, the Flash cameo when he takes down Captain Boomerang. I enjoyed that at the time too, even though it is Ezra Mill now. Uh, they make a new guy joke because they're, uh, they're just, who are they picking on there? Are they picking on Slipknot or someone? It's like, is this the new guy? Is this the new guy? Why is this guy so useless? Um, what do we got here? Oh, all the guards in the prison were, right? Because one of them, because Croc attacked one of them? Yeah. And it's like, what, is this the new guy, okay? Because he's screwing up and he's letting the inmates attack him? Cara Delevingne as Enchantress? Yeah, she was all right in that uh, role. I think that's a bad, bad. Joker going after Harley Quinn? Yeah, that kind of made sense, I guess. Pink unicorn stuffed animal that was Boomerang's, uh, We've that done. was listed when they do yeah, the listing, and it was his fetish. I still don't understand that character, really. Yeah, he's kind of a he's kind of a goofball. Uh, Will Smith said Will Smith gets to say Suicide Squad line. He's the one that names it. Yep. Uh, some good jokes with Captain Boomerang and Harley Quinn when they're joking back and forth. Yes. And also, well, and individually too, because I found Jai Courtney as Captain Boomerang quite funny in it for the little bit that he's in it. Will Smith threatening Margot Robbie. Yeah, that that was pretty intense. Joker showing up out of nowhere on the helicopter. Well, you knew I think he was going to show up. You knew he was going to show up, but it was like, boom, suddenly he's there. I'm like, okay, I like that. I'm on I board for that. I don't think they should have had the messages between them. That kind of ruined it. He should have just showed up and yeah. not had those. We know what was going to happen already. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Harley Quinn ends up back with the squad after she just left and she just falls she in line. nothing else to do. Yeah. There's zombie monsters around. She's still got the bomb in her head, right? El Diablo's no. story, his backstory, his, like, about his family. That was good. I enjoyed that. <sighs> that guy's an intense character. As soon as he can, Boomerang just walks out of the bar. They're like, you don't have to go. I'm destroying my cell phone, which was dumb. And then Boomerang is like, grabs his beer and he's gone. Okay. I don't really even get what Boomerang actually then, does. Then Boomerang just shows up again outside. He's like, eh, what else am I going to do, you know? I'm stuck here anyway. Croc, Croc swimming through the water. He's actually really fast in the water. That was that was the one good thing about Killer Croc in this movie. His joke was terrible. Did he have a joke? No. Yeah, he's like, I'm so beautiful. When they're in the joke. bar. I think that was supposed to be a joke. He's just confident. Deadshot's pimp joke about Flag's woman at the end there. He's like, you gonna let, you gonna let this, you gonna let her do that, man? Go get like your that. woman in line. That I was didn't funny. Like that. I thought that was funny. I didn't like that at all because he said you should slap her on the ass or something. He's just psyching him up I and making a like joke. It. Okay, all the falling garbage trashed the city even more. I thought that was funny <laughs> once it all fell down. Uh, Captain Boomerang wusses out when he's trying to stand up to Waller because she's holding the cell phone again and he tries to stand up and then he's you like, know, holding nope. the cell phone and having the app open was really risky because all it takes is one little tap and you could have like, she kind of 
stop having that app yeah. open all the Why time. Why didn't he throw a boomerang at it? He didn't unless, do unless anything. by doing that, it's like in Star Wars, he if he no smashes it, power. his head could blow he up. He really had no real superpower. It doesn't seem, okay. I don't know, he, just a weird He doesn't power. really. Okay, Joker's re rescues Harley at the end. Okay, I did enjoy that. The fun colors and credits. So the color tone at the end there, before the mid credit scene there. You're really it, pushing it on the details there. It was nice. mid credit scene, Waller meeting with Bruce Wayne. I did enjoy that. I didn't enjoy that she knows who Bruce Wayne I is. I know, you really don't like that. But overall, this is a bad movie, but I had fun with it. So I'm going to give, before when I first saw it, I'm like, this is terrible. And I, this is only my second viewing. So this time I give it best movie ever. That's my thoughts on it. Christine? Uh, go ahead and rant as much as you want. Well, all I know about it is that when you watch it, you told me don't ever watch that movie. It was absolutely horrible. However, compared to the previous two, I'm going to call them turd burgers. Turd burgers. Uh, this sure. is a triple turd burger here. But uh, it's uh, still on the same vein. I don't think it's as bad as uh, the other two. You think it's the best out of the three? I think it's the best out of the three. So on no, your I'm ongoing list, you got Suicide Squad number one, even yeah. though you don't like it. Yeah. What's after that? Batman versus Superman. Okay, then Man of Steel. Yeah. Okay. They're all not good. For me, I got Man of Steel because it's one of my favorites. Then I put Suicide Squad. Then I put Batman v Superman at the bottom. So far, I don't even we're think ranking them as we go. Talking about they're so bad. Anyway, but I what guess didn't that's you like the chore about this? you have assigned us. What's, what's, what is it that you don't like about it? Well, it starts out, they're setting it up okay. Mm -hmm. Sets up okay. Jai Courtney seems to have no real power. We don't really understand his power. He's and stereotypically Australian. That's that his superpower. Is that surf? I don't know. That's his superpower. He can't seem to do anything. And we don't really get his character. He can drink. He uh, can throw three boomerangs. He can he crack jokes. Those uh, are skills. Anyway... It's just kind of lame. I didn't care for the Joker character either. I did like the idea that he was coming to rescue her, but they shouldn't have let us know that in advance. Okay. Um, I think that ruined it. So I story really issue. thought the whole thing with Slipknot was, I would even call it racist for God's sakes. That they just kill him off after like... They Two minutes explain after they all the him? other characters, and they give a lot of detail to Will Smith's character. Like, they spent a lot of time on that. And then this uh, yeah, Adam Beach shows up, and they, like, kill him in five minutes. And they don't even give him a back, like, a backstory? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I really was offended by that as a Canadian. Anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It was terrible. Well, think about the, think about the black guy who dies in the first five minutes of Jurassic Park, man. Well, this was not good. This was not good. Suicide Squad people. Um, they should have given his backstory. Mm -hmm. At least I just I, that got me right up on my high horse right away. Mm -hmm. However, it's not as bad. At least it has it has a purpose. It has a it has like a, a beginning. A middle and an end. I'll give it that. Where these other couple movies are just all over the place. Mm -hmm. They have these foes they have to defeat. I mean, it has a simple purpose, this movie. Assemble the team, get save the city, and then we'll see what happens with you afterwards. But the foes are really stupid. And I like the idea of the Enchantress at first, the way they portrayed her. And then she's like wiggling around and has this weird brother who's yeah, she, hollow. She's all flippity floppity. And those characters should have been way more ancient and uh, real like eye for eye type characters and shouldn't have had so many words to use. Maybe less neon sounded, colors. And sounded very modern. Less neon orange and neon green. I don't know about the <laughs> colors, but they just were like some modern a bunch of twins they picked out from Manchester or something. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. That was really dumb. The foes were dumb. But anyway. Yeah, and those googly-eyed monsters. Uh, no one likes them. Were they made out of rock? We really don't know. They don't really demonstrate what they're made out of. It seems like they're made out of rock. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It doesn't really make much sense. I mean, yeah, Deadshot was not menacing enough at all. He's supposed to be menacing. He was not. I totally liked the portrayal of him in the series previous, the Arrow series. He was much better in that. 
this character was too all over the place. Hey, he was a really good guy, but yet he was a really bad killer. I don't know. It didn't. His character didn't make sense. Jai Courtney's character didn't make sense. The El Diablo guy, we're sort of seeing what he could do at the end. They didn't give him enough backstory about what kind of thing he was. I don't think they did. There was just missing details. Anyway, at least it had... We knew it was an adventure. They were going to get rid of the bad guys, and they got rid of the bad guys. And the croc fella didn't need to be in the movie at all. Yeah, he. Yeah, that's that's why they made fun of him in the Lego Batman. They give him a backstory. Anyway, uh, yeah, and Amanda Waller killing her employees. Well, that's typical in the public service, I guess. We should be. Is it? Yeah. I think they just kill you on the inside. Yeah, slowly over time. But they don't shoot you. Well, maybe it's they would. Less they would if they. Way. They would if they could. Anyway, okay? um, it's pretty lame. I think they could have just if they would have made the bad guys better, it would have been a lot better movie. Forget all these other little problems. The bad guys were just sort of lame, and they they know that they can get rid of this bad evil ancient monster with a bomb. They're for sure certain about it. That's all it takes is a bomb. Well, they could have done that from the sky, for God's sakes. They didn't need all this. They had to get Amanda Waller. They got her already. Yeah, they had to get her twice. But, you know, the thing, oh, the bomb's really going to kill them. We're for sure. And the bomb's going to kill that weird circle of garbage that she's got there. We're sure of that. No, man. The bomb would have accelerated their power and made them stronger. Have you ever watched one of these things? Obviously, Same. they haven't. Anyway, it was pretty lame, but still, at least it had a cohesive story. I'll give it that. You sound and really upset about this again. Superman didn't go crazy, and Batman didn't go crazy and forget who he was, so I'm glad of that in this movie. So, But yeah. we did get to see more Batman. <sighs> did you enjoy that? Not really. It could have been anyone in the suit. We just really see him at the very end. No. And he looks kind of depressed. Mm -hmm. A bit mopey, like Superman did. Anyway, I don't know. It's not a very good movie, but it's at least it's on par with many, many movies. What uh, What did you enjoy about this movie? Since you're so upset well, about it, I just said it just it has a it has a start, an end, and a finish. There you go. It's straightforward. The movie is straightforward. That's the one thing I did like about it. So for straightforwardness, I give it a sixty-five. How is that? Okay. On Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> This movie currently has a 26% critic rating, so yeah. not a lot of critics saying nice things about it, and a 58% audience Yeah, score. that's about it. Yeah, so, I give it a 65, because at least it was like, uh, it wasn't too long, see, and it had a story that actually sort of made sense in the end, unlike some of their other movies. What's the highest rated one? Is it Man of Steel? Oh, that's terrible. Of the DCU? No. So far? It's awful, Man of Steel. It's rated higher, 56% and 75%. It's really dumb. Anyway, I don't even think we should talk about these movies. They're so bad. Anyway, but you like them, so. I like some Let's, of them. Okay, well, that's all anyway, I have to say. Anyway, I had it. a fun time. Okay, <laughs> and Batman v Superman is 29% critic rating and 63% audience score. So I guess Man of Steel was the best of these so far. Not in my to mind. Audiences and critics. Uncle Ben dying in the tornado for no reason. That really That's got me. Pa Kent. Pa Kent. Oh, Uncle, Uncle Ben, ben is Spider-Man. Exactly. Well, there you go. <laughs> he was totally immemorable. And why he died. The dog was going to be okay, man. The dog is fine. You just can't let that go for some reason. That is I think so that's ridiculous. your I think that's your favorite DCEU movie. Listen. Cuz you talk about it so much. It's similar to when Spider-Man goes in the subway. It's similar to that. It's on par with that. Oh, that movie. underground subway yeah, lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that to me, that those dumb. two things are equal in their dumbness. Ah. Uh. Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yes. That that movie's been in the entertainment news recently, but we're not movie here to talk so about Spider-Man. We're talking yeah, so into that, the man. DCEU. That's really bad, by the way, in my, in my book. So we're three in, <laughs> and we got, what do we got? We got nine more to go. 
Oh that are God. currently out, and one's oh, coming out in June. So it's such torture. Then on thirteenth, so you're gonna really enjoy enough. the next one. Oh gosh, what's the next one? Wonder Woman from 2017. Oh. Nice. Now you're really killing me. You're gonna love it. Okay. When she just walk, she walks across Europe one night. Hey, hey. Hey, 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 we're not reviewing it yet. we got to watch it first so it's fresh. Through the front, one evening, <clears throat> little sailboat takes what do you, there. You've heard our thoughts. What do you think on David Iyer's Suicide Squad from 2016? Is it good? Is it bad? I say I had a fun time, but it's a bad movie nonetheless, and I gave it a best movie ever. So I had fun <laughs> re-watching it. If you haven't seen it in a long time... Cause I ain't seen it since 2016. Maybe give it another watch. See if it see if it was as good or as bad as you thought it was. And let us know your thoughts down below. <laughs> Join us next time for another segment of Into the DCEU. <laughs> We're back with another segment of Nap Time at Hogwarts, which is our ongoing. Which I don't agree with the name of it. Which is you don't agree with any of the names I pick no. out. So. Don't make me call you out on, on the show, okay? So, if you've been watching, we had a little bit of a break because you went away. It's okay. Yes. But we we did uh, Original Recipe Harry Potter. And then what did we do? Uh, Harry Potter Cruise Control. And now we've watched Harry Potter 3 Return of the King. Professor Askman, Gregory is very biased against his movies, obviously, already. He hasn't even watched them. No, these and are funny already, references. Like, Anyway, I, I had a, I had kind of a fun time watching this one. Would you like to go first or should I go first? You go first. Okay, so I've never seen this movie before. And this movie is from, what year is it from, dear? I don't know. What's it called again? Harry Potter. The uh, Prisoner of Azkaban. What did I call it? Harry Potter. Return of the King? Harry Potter 3D. Let me know if you get these references down 3D. below in the comments. Okay, this movie was way too long. Two hours, 21 mo minutes. These movies are all way too so long. To oh, yeah, spoilers, by the way. Yeah. You have to rewind time. Of course, why. we're going to spoil this. This movie currently has a 90% certified fresh rating and an 86% audience score, so it's rated pretty high. Like so, all the Harry is Potter it movies. still in the 80s? The 80s? It's never been in the I 80s. I thought the first one was in the 80s. No. Didn't it say it was like 1986 like or something? No. Are you sure? Yes. They didn't come out when no. I was in grade six. Anyway. Oh my gosh. Did no. You, did you realize that this movie, at this franchise, is all about sexual references? Because it I've isn't. been watching these movies and I've been paying attention. It isn't. And it's all about sexual references. Oh my gosh. Did you notice that? It isn't. Has anyone noticed this before? It isn't. Are you sure? Would you stop it? No, I'm they're serious. Good, they're good fun stories. It's good fun family show to watch. However, it does get more serious with this one. Every every one that goes on, it gets does more it, Does it get done. more serious, this one? Because there was no dead cats with their blood writing, writing, writing words dead. on you the wall. It wasn't dead. weren't paying attention. It was petrified. It's, it's still had the blood on the it wall. It wasn't dead. Yeah, it was from the cat. I no, watched that it movie. wasn't the cat's blood. One of the bad things about this movie is we didn't get to see the, uh, the haunted toilet. Because that was funny. We didn't get to see the no, the haunted she's toilet there later all the, on. the ghost that she's haunts there the, later on. the toilet stall in the girls' washroom. And she's in another one. Hopefully ghosts can't smell. You only go to that bathroom if you're up to no good. Because nobody goes in there. Mm-hmm. It's only for a clandestine. Is that why we didn't see it? Yes. So you you do realize they all like they all got the wands, right? Here, where's my thing here? So they all got the wands, and I mentioned this last time. So they got the wands, and the wands are like dick metaphors. No, they're not. Okay. Stop it. Stop it. Listen, in the Harry last Potter one, in the last. It's a very imaginative series. It has very interesting things happening and very interesting characters, and I really enjoy it. Stop ruining it. I'm not trying to ruin it. This is what I you got out of the movie. You are ruining it. So the kid, it, the movie starts off, you correct me if I'm wrong, movie starts off and the kid is like five years older than the last movie, 
So they made them they one had after a, they the had other. a break, I guess, because he's five years. All of them are like five years he's older. Not five and years older, but they get older. It as starts the off, go on. and he's back with his douchebag uh, guardians that he lives with, his aunt and uncle. Like, so he's got all these fat, ugly relatives, and he's in bed under the sheets playing with his wand. Okay, and oh he's trying gosh. to get white light to come Stop out of it, it, but it's not working. Stop it! I'm Remember, turn you off right now. Stop it! <laughs> you want all your lightsabers? And his uncle keeps coming in to to try and catch him, and then he turns his his aunt comes over and he turns her into a, like a floating balloon. I guess he fills her full of helium, and she just floats up and. And her brother, his aunt. her brother, his uncle, tried to save him. And eventually he's like, I'm not dying for this. Sorry, I'd rather live down here. You got to deal with your own stuff. So I guess she's dead because no, they never really saw what happened to it. They do say that they, rest, they got her. I miss I that. He doesn't pay attention in any I miss of these that. No, he's I, on asking I watched this one really good. So they get into a big argument really and he's like, I'm leaving. So he takes his wand again and his big giant suitcase and, and his go, owl what is yeah, that a metaphor I for i think i think what it was is that they got those animals at the end of the last one i remember that right they have them because everyone Ron, every series they've had the animals i thought they got them at the end of the last no. one after they defeated the giant snake Oh, when did they get them? Every show, everyone you're not been paying attention i think the animals are a oh. metaphor for puberty Oh my gosh. Okay. Anyway, the animals, they have to have a magic animal because they have to turn it into a teacup. Remember, Ron turns his yeah. rat into a cup and it's got a tail. Well, why does, why, if I'm wrong, why does Hermione have a cat? You can have any kind of animal. She, yeah. Her parents are muggles. She can't go have a snake or but, nothing. Her parents wouldn't like yeah, that. Yeah, but much. do you know why she always has a cat? Because she has a cat. You have a cat. You, you know, what, what does your you mother. You have a cat. What does your mother call a cat? Stop it right now. Or I'm turning this and off. And she always has the cat. Oh my gosh. Okay. Someone else has better it. seen this before. Has, has probably seen this because I know I'm right on this. Stop it. So, about my poor Harry Potter. You're really So Harry Potter is being stalked by this dog. Uh, like It's like a were dog. It's an animagus. Yeah, it's a were dog. No, it's not a were dog. It's an animagus. They talk and, about but, then, but just before he gets attacked, because this is a really dangerous world, this this phantom bus picks him up. Yeah. And apparently Harry Potter's never been on a bus before. Because this oh, bus is going super fast. You know what the first rule of being on a public bus is? Hold the rail. Hold the rail. Because he that. ends up he ends up at in he's lucky he didn't go through the windshield. He doesn't go on a, a few bus times. normally. He lives That's out the, in the suburbs. And they got beds there. How is that guy staying in the bed when they're constantly it's like speeding like crazy and then stopping? And I guess do they got magic brake pads on that thing yeah, they too? Yeah, magic everything. Because you can't you can't go that fast and then just stop and like have brake pads magic. left over. So they got magic brake pads. Lucky the them. Magic bus. I guess they don't have any maintenance costs on the magic bus. It's the night bus, I think it is. Yes. So they take the magic bus. Yes, issues with the bus. And he gets off the bus. You and don't understand what happens, any of this movie. What happens no, after I... he gets off the bus? He goes to meet his friends because school starts the next day. Okay. He knows why he leaves. He only leaves the last yeah. minute because he knows he's got a place to go. He doesn't just leave in the middle of the summer. He leaves. He gets fed up with them because he's going to school the next no, day. No, he gets put on the train. He gets put on the Hogwarts Express. Yeah. And they're sitting in this going, cart. You have to look that up. And they're sitting in this oh. cart, and Buddy's just got his cloak over him. They're like, he's asleep. Uh, have you been on a bus before? And there's a person with a. And they're like, hey guys, let's them? just have a conversation, okay? So they're kind of being rude, and then suddenly, thirteen-year-old kids. And then suddenly, apparently, the White Walkers show up because everything is frozen then. Yeah. And then the Grim Reaper shows up, and he's like. I'm gonna, and it's like, what so the Grim called? Reaper the Grim is giving Reapers. him a kiss. What are they called? Tess, what are they I called? have no you idea. You not any attention to this okay? movie. So this Grim Reaper shows up and is trying to kiss Harry Potter to death, apparently. And then this guy who was just sleeping wakes up and he's like, I got my wand. And he takes care of it by shooting a lot of white light out of his wand, okay? Remember, this we're talking about wands here. This charm. Yeah, apparently. You are such a muggle. That's all I can say. You are this such is... a muggle. 
He has no imagination, people. So he can't even get to school safely without death stalking him. No. And it looks like the Grim Reaper. What? Yeah. They're called Dementors. Yeah, it's still a Grim but Reaper, they know okay? That the, it's death. The criminal that, it's all about the criminal, by the way, you wouldn't know what Sirius the Black. Is, the way Gregory has been talking about it. Yes. Sirius Black. He escapes from Azkaban, Meanwhile, and they know his target is Harry Potter, so therefore they how have How do they these, know this? Because that's why he's supposed to, because he survived. He survived what? Voldemort. We they don't say, see Voldemort in this movie. No, because Sirius Black was charged with basically telling oh. Voldemort where Harry Potter's family was so that they could all be killed. I thought... He and the, the idea is that Sirius Black is out to finish what he started and get rid of Harry Potter because Harry Potter is a big threat to Voldemort. That doesn't make any sense. Is it be, but he, he defeated that riddle guy. That was Who? again. That's still Voldemort, but he's still with the there. giant snake. I he's watched been it. He's trying different ways to come back to power, and he keeps on. Harry Potter keeps on stopping him. So the idea is, you need to stop Harry Potter before Voldemort can come back to power. So that's the whole idea. The dement. So these Dementors, yeah. which are Grim Reapers, there's a lot of them. They're patrolling around the school. Yes. But they keep trying to kill Harry Potter at the same time. They're attracted to him because of all the misery that he's been through in his life. Where all the other kids haven't well, been through that much. Family family are real dicks to him. They all. are. And then his... Uh, and he's an orphan. Neville then, is also an orphan who had the same experience. But the Dementors don't go after him. His magic really broomstick. Okay. Which, I mean, come on. The Dementors on, should have okay? gone after Neville. They have well, to have their me. British sports, so suddenly they're playing Quidditch in the rain and a thunderstorm. Well, this, Why are they doing because this? Because, obviously, J.K. Rowling went to a school that, when it was raining, they still had gym. And she's getting back at all her old teachers, I think, for this one. So, apparently, in this school, <laughs> kids have to go outside and play in a thunderstorm. They still yeah. have to go and a gym. Which, we did. We anyway, had it, it doesn't raining. go well for them. I didn't. We they have to, they, uh... We didn't have a gym, so we had to go inside. There was no other place to put us. <laughs> so he gets his magic broomstick broken. So is is that, like, a similar... Is that comparison because Ron had his broken no, wand? No, his broomstick last, gets last, broken. Last episode? He really, it's really a prized possession. It's like your skateboard if you're a skateboarder. Anyway, he does get a new one. And then suddenly but Harry... But he starts finding he has a family in this. He actually has a family. Yeah, we know Ron has a family. Not Ron. So Harry Potter suddenly meets up with those two creepy ginger Ron twins there. His, his, uh, and they're like, hey, here's this map. Where'd you get it? Hey, don't worry about it. And then suddenly they're gone. So now he's got this magic map that shows where people are. In the... Yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's an interesting idea, but... Uh, she has great ideas. I love the book, kind of creepy, the monster book. But apparently you need this map because when you walk down the halls, you have to walk down the halls and it's pitch black. You're not supposed to be out at it night. It has to be pitch you black because the paintings are are sleeping? No. What were they? They can't... They, they don't got electricity when there? When you're at boarding school, you don't go walk in the... It's like when you're in class at school. Yeah, you're I, not supposed to be in the halls unless you get a hall pass. I understand right? that, but in terms of just... Oh. you got to have emergency lighting. It can't be pitch black. It's a castle. This place, is a, this place is a, an OHS nightmare. It is. Anyway, it is that, yeah, because he runs it... Because he's using his map and he runs into Alan Rickman, who has his own wand... Yeah. And hold some hostage with a, with a big white light. And what at the do you end. think of Alan Rickman? Is he scary? No. You don't think he's scary? No. He's just kind of a dick. He is a dick. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know what Alan Rickman's doing in this movie besides being a dick, but every he's time. He's a dick in all the movies. They, they keep having new teachers every semester, yeah. apparently. Yeah. And it's like there a running is, gag. You wouldn't like this one because there was a, a hippie. A hippie wizard? Did you like her? She no, seemed I like don't a like real. Hippies. She seemed like a dirty hippie. <laughs> she didn't like Hermione either. <laughs> yeah, because Hermione just keeps appearing out of nowhere, and it's supposed to be this joke it, that calls it Huey. that Ron keeps saying. It's like I didn't see her come in. I'm like, who no cares, one else buddy? Seems to notice because he's got a thing for her. Did you not notice that? 
he doesn't pick it up. Okay. Okay, so he's got a thing for Hermione. I don't know what happens. Oh, my goodness. So... Anyway... That, You're not telling then, people what happened in the movie. What happens is then that... what the hell happened? Then they go to see Hagrid. They, they go see the village idiot there in his little little hut there outside of the school, I guess. And you got his giant pumpkin patch. They always end up there and then people end up coming. They have to like secretly leave. Had, didn't they do that in the last movie with the invisibility cloak? Yeah. Okay, their peeping Tom cloak, as they should call yeah, it. Yeah, well, it belonged to Harry's father, because he was always up to no good. So he's peeping on people all the time there. Jeez. Yeah, now something you're starting to see in this movie. Telling you, see, it's all sexual references so, here. This J.K. So Rowling not. is kind of a... Something you're starting to see is, well, a lot of these people in the movie are the same age. And you're starting to see they were friends with Harry Potter's father. Okay. You're starting to see that, mm -hmm. that there were, there were certain cliques. I don't okay. know if you got that in the movie. Yeah, there is. There's the different guilds that they're in there. No, it's not just that. But you're starting okay. to see people that were friends with his parents. Who? And people that weren't. S Harry sneaks into Hogsmeade. Who's Hogsmeade? <sighs> the village. He's not allowed to go because his uncle won't sign the form. Yeah, he sneaks in and, and finds out that Black is snap. his godfather. Yeah, at the bar there? Yeah, he basically, okay, you're not helping the audience here. They haven't seen the movie. Basically, Harry Potter is told he has a godfather and that he's evil and that he's a murderer and that he actually betrayed Harry Potter's family to Voldemort and that's how his family got killed. And he's told that this guy has now escaped from Azkaban. No one's ever escaped from Azkaban before and they've hired these dementors to guard the cat the school so and Azka harry potter because because they need to catch him so azkaban is harry like potter. magic world uh alcatraz yeah Hagrid or it's, was uh, there in the previous, a previous is it really bad uh, is it is it like arkham it's really asylum bad. you see more of it later on it's really bad so it's arkham asylum it's then. guarded by the those dementors anyway or is it more like he the escapes Phantom Zone? he escapes and but the twist, which is something really interesting, is that all of, all this time they have said it was Sirius Black that did it, but actually it wasn't. It was this other kid who was in their friend group called Peter, and he he was the one that betrayed them to Voldemort, and he actually was not murdered by Sirius Black. That's why Sirius Black ended up in Azkaban. No, instead he turned into a rat and has been in hiding about that. in Ron's house. Yeah, the For rat like that he has. The 12 years. So if they all got rats, if they all got animals, but he got a rat, did he originally get a rat or did he they get this rat that. man? They said that it was passed on from his older brother. They've all had this rat as and, their And pet. it's a dude. They don't know that. They just think it's a rat. Rats only live like a couple so of this, years. This, this guy, rat has lived like 12 years and no one ever thought about this it. This rat man, apparently, is <laughs> like a, it's a reverse... <laughs> It's a reverse rat werewolf. No, okay? it's not a werewolf. So it's this guy, when the moon comes out, he turns into a dude. No, and the rest of the time he's a rat. <laughs> okay, so it's like a werewolf that's sort of, except in happened. reverse. That's not so what did the no. rat get infected with this uh, with this curse? So if people can become werewolves or like oh. were dogs, apparently in this. Does that mean the rats in this world can become were people? Oh, yeah. And that's, then they turn into a means. people when you they turn into people when no. there's a when there's a full moon? He was hiding this whole time, pretending to be this rat. He was hiding. You sure? Oh my god, I give I'm up. I'm pretty sure this is anyway, like a were rat. So in the something. end, Harry Potter realizes that he actually does have some real family, but also again, he's still grown having good relations with all the kids at school and realizing they're part of his family too and his other family because they're complete jerks. Um, he can blow them up if he wants. Anyway, that's kind of... And Sirius Black says he can come and live with him. But he's still kind of in legal. Yeah, Gary problems. Oldman shows up out of nowhere. Meanwhile, Ares has like, got his own dubious thing going on there, which he's is one of his professors. He, you should have yeah, he's the Professor werewolf. Professor Lupin, right? Yeah, so, he's the werewolf. Did he have anything to do with the creation of that were-rat? It's not a were-rat. <laughs> you just, you're just not 
in the. You're just a muggle. No, I'm watching this really good. <laughs> anyway. So they. So this. The rat gets away, and Ron gets picked up by this tree and thrown down a hole it's underneath the it. The willow. We've seen it before. He already got his car stuck in it. It's a dangerous thing to have. So on the what's ground. the hole? Is that like the tree's butt? It's a secret tunnel to this streaking, the secret tunnel, huh? Streaking sack. Yeah, sh sh streaking shack. Why? What? Wow. Stop it. This is for kids? I don't this know. You're all, just ruining it. This it's is all really, sexual references. It's not. It's not at all. You're just ruining it. I'm telling you, that's what it is. I, anyway. Has no one seen this before? I bet if I read the book. You're, well, you haven't read them. Gonna, I have. I'm gonna write an essay on Reddit You're sometime just about terrible. this. Just like I'm gonna write anyway, another essay about Lo my theory for Lord of the Rings. Wait it's till all you watch World the War next one. The Earth next World one War. gets really dark. Really dark things start happening. There's dark enough things okay. happening in this one, but Voldemort so, isn't in it. In but the next end, one it gets really dark. In the end, Harry Potter has to defeat all the Grim Reapers because there's like fifty of them. All the mentors. Okay, he defeats them but he thinks with his, his wand. He thinks it's okay. his father that he's, does it. Yeah, he's got his wand. Sad. He's got his wand. Yeah, it is sad. He's got his wand. And he shoots a lot of bright white light at it. Okay. And that's how he defeats the Grim Reapers. It's important. Something. So oh, yeah, that's mind. not a that's Something not a reference important. to anything there or a it's metaphor for anything. Your Patronus. And then they have, to, and oh, that's when they're okay, going back in time. So apparently, they, these kids can just go back in time and change. Yeah, they just time travel as much as they want. They gave it to Hermione so she could take all the courses that she wanted to take. Cause she wants yeah. to take all the courses possible because she's a real keener. That's why she keeps showing up out of nowhere. Yes, now you get it. But she did still you not get, get that? She, you yeah, well, I did get that, but she's also <sighs> would get really tired. What is she just on? Uh, That's the way she is. She's a keener. This you still only so much energy in the day. You still gotta sleep. You not still gotta you're eat. Keener. I like taking all the subjects I could take, too. I hated it when they said I had to take a study break. I didn't like that at all. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, Hermione uses more of her magic in this one, which I think is just a reference, a metaphor for sexual power. Oh, my God, stop Because she didn't it. do much in the first two. Stop And Ron it. was the one with She's his broken brains. wand last time. She's the brains behind it all. Okay. Anyway... Ron's the brave one, sort of. He's he's like the he's like the loyal follower, and Harry's got to do all the heavy lifting, and Hermione's like the brains. Uh -huh. Anyway, it's an enjoyable movie. It's fun. I'm sure listening to Gregory talk about it, you'd never want to watch it in a million years. And you know, <laughs> I love the movie. I think it's great. Maybe because you watched this when you were younger, you didn't see all this stuff. And now you're, I think you're just refusing to see what's kind of right there on like the screen. I was like 30 or something when I watched it. Yeah, but yeah, I, back to your time of innocence there. Oh yeah. I mean, this is a... Uh, this has got some. Uh, I don't. When did it come out? Anyway, uh, some pretty remember. adult metaphors in this. I don't even remember when it came out. I think it out. came out in two thousand four. Yeah, there which apparently is five years later. I did like Ron's mullet. He's got an eighties mullet. I'm pretty sure this is in the eighties for some reason. I don't know why. And there's all these. The we see a lot of these paintings in this one. I was and, thirty when it came and out. And I, I did. Right. Okay, we've moved on from that now. Okay. There's all these paintings and stuff, and then one gets ripped up, and... It's just fun. It's and... just fun things in the castle. Don't you get it? They go to school in a big haunted castle. I didn't find the, 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 the talking paintings that were that much alive. I found that more annoying than fun. It, that can be a fun joke, but they overdid it, and I found it annoying. So, that was just me. If you enjoy it, I mean, yeah, go ahead and enjoy it. That's why I didn't interrupt when you were, uh, when you were watching this movie there. Mm -hmm. so... You have Kevin asked me what's happening... Anyway, yeah, they, don't, they don't do a good job of explaining things sure. here. Well, no, they do explain it. That's one of the problems in these things. That's why it's so long. Show, don't tell. Instead, they're just, oh. I'm going to tell you this anyway, information. Well, I missed that because I was still paying attention to... It's a fabulous movie. I was I still shocked by all, the, by all the white light coming out of the wands all the time there. I give it and a 94. I was 94. like, what's going on here? I like it. 94. What do you give it? I had a Mr. fun time Bobby with Gus. this, but it didn't make much sense. 
And I don't think this don't content think matters should it. be in children's movies, so I'm going to give it a worst movie ever. Oh, yeah. You're going to give it a worst movie ever before you watched it. No, this one's better. This one's better. I'm going to... Okay, in terms of ranking, I'll put <sighs> this one, then I'll put number three. So, Harry Potter... Uh, What did we call it again? It's Harry Potter... Philosopher. Harry Potter Stone 3D. Or the Sorcerer's okay. Stone. Then I'm going to have Harry Potter 2 Electric Boogaloo. <sighs> and then I'm going to go back to uh, Harry Potter uh, number I one. I got all the books, Original you know, one and should, done. You should read them. Anyway. You really want me to dissect those books for you? No. I bet no. I could find a lot of metaphor oh, and symbolism gosh, in it. Stop ruining Harry Potter, please. I'm not ruining it. Okay. If anything, I'm making this better. Yeah, well, I think we should watch it separately. No, anyway, we're gonna keep watch. We're gonna watch the next one. That's my thoughts on it. Did you have any more thoughts about this? I like the movie. It's a good movie. It's fun. It's Harry Potter. Don't be a muggle. Goodbye. <laughs> That's what I have to say about it. I don't know. You're frustrating me. I didn't really care for that old guy who's just walking around the, the, the school in his pajamas all the time. Looks like a confused old man. And the teachers in this never do anything. It's all, they always leave it up to the kids. Like, these are the laziest faculty ever. It's like, so the old guy, Father Time there, what's his name? Dumbledore? Dumbledore, yeah. So he's just walking around in his pajamas while there's all these children around. That's kind of inappropriate. And then there's the old teacher witch lady from Down Abbey, the countess or something. She didn't do anything in this. She's barely in this. And then they got the teacher there, Aries there, David the Lewis. Am I pronouncing that right? He does a little bit. And then Gary Oldman's, well, Gary Oldman's being Gary Oldman. And then they do the same kind of bit with the Hagrid guy. They're like, oh, we're in Hagrid's place. But we got to hide because people are coming. Apparently, everyone's always visiting this guy at the same time. That's kind of getting old there. So, anyway. Yeah. Could have worked on the story a bit better. And uh, I don't like all the metaphors all the time. It's fabulous. So I did find some of them funny, though. Uh, Christine enjoyed it. You gave it the best movie ever. Okay, I gave it the worst movie ever. What are your thoughts on uh, Harry Potter 3 Return of the King? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Is this a great movie? Do you not like it? It's a great movie. Okay. I'm, the, more, the more I watch this, I'm like, this is magic fantasy for children at the time. Because also, Lord of the Rings was coming out at the time. And the magic is very subtle and deals with a lot of adult themes. Where this is like, no, this is for kids. But is it really? I'm finding reasons why this shouldn't be for kids. Let us know your thoughts on Harry Potter 3D, and uh, we'll read them out on a future episode. Take care. We're finally back for another episode of our favorite segment, Chakotay's Odyssey, featuring the adventures of Janeway. Oh God. So we took a little bit of a break because Christine was away visiting her family. Did you miss this segment? Oh, I missed it a lot, yeah. You okay. tell me My all favorite. of the adventures. So, so what adventure happened this week? Do tell. State of Flux. Okay. Sounds interesting. Episode 11. So Starting to... off, was it a good one? Should I watch this one or a bad one? Every once in a while there's a good one. This one was this one was fun. This one was all about... The, the main star of this one is uh, Chakotay. Oh, He'd you be the must main have liked star, this one. I know okay? you have a little bit of romance there for Chakotay. So, and man. you know who's in this a lot? Is the Bajoran <sighs> Ensign Seska. So she's in this a lot, oh, and it's yeah, all about her. they're framing her for this stuff. She's got dark hair. Yeah, she got yeah, dark hair, her, but she's the Bajoran. Yeah, well, there's a few Bajorans. So this is all about they're. It starts off they're on a planet. They're foraging for food, right? Right, getting that old algae slime off the rocks. Okay. And Neelix is there, and he's like, "Oh, those apples you pick, don't eat those because they'll give you like body spasms or something, right?" Don't they have tricorders again for all of this? Anyway, and he's like, no, uh, eat this root, which tastes like garbage, but it's got lots of vitamins and minerals in it. So he's, he's right. like, eat these roots. And Chakotay has to go rescue Seska because she went off into a cave. She's the one who wandered Everyone off. Everyone knows, don't go to sentient caves. It's not a good idea. She rescued him. You know who she rescued him from? From the Kazon. From the first oh, episode, funny, those people yeah. with no water. Yeah, yeah. Who destroyed well, the, the, the space elves in the, the first episode. The guys that have, like, clay stuck in their hair or something. Yeah, because they can't take a shower or Obviously. something. 
So he has to rescue her. And then what happens as soon as they leave, they get a, they, there's a distress call from, from a Kazon ship. So they go to investigate and everyone's dead. Okay. And oh, so they're like, good. there's been an, there's been like a radiation explosion there. What do we do? We should beam over. They ate the apples, obviously. No, 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 no. So they beam over and they're like, it's fine. We don't need PPE or anything. It's all good. On them? No, what it was is like, we're sure the ship's shields are in place. But everyone just died in a nuclear explosion. Yeah, from the radiation. But the shields are holding the radiation in place. Oh. Yeah, not very good writing there. Yeah, did there. they use their tricorders? But they seem to not want to use tricorders. No, they're show. always using their tricorders. They they're like work. tricordering it up. Maybe they just got the like. The, the, the company didn't pay enough for these tricorders. It's, it's like you our technology. It's like our technology at work. They didn't pay enough, so you only get like two two uh, functioning parts of the app, and the other like twenty the rest are don't unavailable. Work. The yeah. rest don't work. They haven't been updated yet. Yeah. They're just like looking at the flashing lights on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they get there, and these Kalon are like melded into the ship. That's not good. Yeah. From, from the radiation and so it's like I they tried to hook up something to uh to their ships at, to their ship's power source and okay. this this explosion happened and then they discover it's federation technology that they tried to hook up oh, they get how did from? they get the federation they get it? tell me where exactly they get it? so then they have to do this investigation and everything Ooh, yeah. so it's the three of them it's janeway it's all right chakotay because he's the main part of this episode and it's one of your favorites Tuvok. Well, Tuvok should be... He should be the science officer, but he's not. No, he's the security they officer. They don't really have a science officer. I think this is a problem where their science is bad. But they have so much science in the they ship. Have, like, that's also how they were to identify the equipment that was on... Science that's how it. they were able to identify the equipment on the Kazon ship because it had their special biomolecular technology and, that only Voyager has. Janeway seems to so be someone the gave science them, person. Someone gave them this stuff, right? Oh. How'd they get it? Or someone stole it and then sold it to them. And so there's this big investigation and everyone's like, it's got to be Seska, right? And Chakotay's like, no, I've been working with her forever, right? She was a Maquis. She was with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Even though, even though he's pissed off at... He keeps mentioning that he's pissed off at Tuvok because Tuvok was a spy for the Federation. Well, he's he like, I trusted you, Tuvok. Officer. We were brothers, man. Um, well, it says, Harry Kim barely, barely makes an appearance in this. So he shows up, I think, at the plant while they're gathering apples, poisonous apples. Such a boring character, anyway. Tom so Paris boring. shows up and he's like, on the, he's like, Shouldn't what am I doing here him? this episode? Isn't he not the criminal guy? They're not blaming him at all, eh? Belana's barely in it Just as well. No, Belana's in it because she's doing all the science stuff so they can she's access the core. She's got to like do the ship. They don't. They need a science so, officer. They so everyone's around. blaming Seska, but it could be Lieutenant. David or other whatever his name, the other engineer. The okay, but all signs are leaning towards Seska. And then what happens is she gets she gets in trouble because she goes over to the ship herself while Bolana is still hooking up her science force fields. She's like, no, 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 I got this. Okay. She goes, checks it out, gets into a there's another explosion or something, more radiation. She gets beamed directly to sick bay, and then She's doing okay, but the doctor has to tend to her, right? Right. And then the doctor discovers something. What? She's not Bajoran. What is she? Yeah, exactly. What is she? You know what she is? She's another spy. So she was never Maquis. She's a changeling. No. She's a Cardassian. Oh. Okay? So she was a Cardassian spy infiltrating the Maquis. And Chakotay's like, did anyone on the... Was I the only Maquis? Was everyone else just spy spying on me, and he had no clue? I don't know if the Cardassians really need it to be. And he has feelings for her, right? Because this whole time they're like, you uh, know, okay. this is his we'll one true love. Put her up to a gold the cock or something. So she sold this stuff to the Kazon. Oh, and she the, did. Yeah, and she hooked it and then tried to cover it up with a but double she fake. She doesn't need any money. She can't use it. Yeah. What does she? What does she want in return? I don't know. Just causing up, stirring up the pot. So I don't she know. um, I, I missed that. I guess she didn't really say. That it. doesn't make any sense because you don't need money in this. She just 
You know, she In gave them, they don't need She money. gave them an extra replicator. And when say she's it, more being nice to And the reason why there was an explosion people. is because when the Kazon hooked it up to their technology, right. boom, they didn't do it right. Oh. So oh. they caused the their the explosion. Really, they should all be given those Kazon replicators and making nice with them because they they are a problem. They made a big enemy in that first. Yeah. If all you guys do space. is give them one replicator so that then they're cool, it's like it's not a, who cares? Yeah, yeah. But prime directive, remember? Prime directive. I don't think that really implies there. Anyway, they already have ships. And okay. Stuff. So in the end, uh, oh. what's her name? Seska gets away. So she's like the new villain. She goes. She goes yeah, with the Kazon. I do remember her. So, okay. Well. So fine. she takes off with the Kazon. So. Well, they're Cardassians, and the Federation don't really see eye to eye. This one was kind of all over the place, so it would kind of keep you guessing. But they're Cardassians. I mean, the Marquis. That's their whole thing. Marquis. They wanted to get rid of the Cardassians, right? So I guess she's been, yeah, her skin's been because they're xenophobic, the they're racist against the Cardassians. No, I don't think it's because they're racist. I think they're just bitter and want revenge. Anyway. I don't know. There's a lot of racism in Star Trek there. All the alien races hate each other, which, you know. I think it's the opposite, actually. Really? Anyway, they all work together. And they want everyone to go in the Federation. They just want to do Kumbaya all the time. Yeah, that's so. that's the that's the whole mantra. But some of them don't want to do kumbaya, and then they get offended, and that's this. What uh, this it, episodes are are slowly getting better. Every once in a while, but we get an interesting one. Motivation doesn't really make sense. So was e- that was episode discover. eleven, State of Flux. Okay, you can check out that one. You can also check Seska. out episode eight, ex post facto. That's where Tom Paris gets a he's a murder mystery there. Oh yeah, she said okay? that one was interesting. And that has and so if you enjoy uh, Voyager, if there's any big fans right. out there, let us know. If you got any recommendations of what your favorite episodes are, let us know down in the comments below. And this has been another fabulous episode of Chakotay's Odyssey, featuring the adventures of Janeway. Thank you. Now, do you know what time it is for? What time is it? It's time for our favorite segment. Chakotay's Odyssey, featuring another adventure of Janeway. Oh, goodness. This is episode 12. It's called Heroes and Demons. Was this, it a good one? No. This oh. was not a good one. <laughs> They're kind of more fun. <laughs> yeah, the, well, check out those two that I mentioned. Yeah, but this two one, good ones of 12 so far. This is a holodeck episode. Oh, that damn holodeck. It's Who, a killer machine. <laughs> who's stuck on the holodeck that they got to rescue? Tuba? Nope. Nope. Harry Kim. Harry Kim. Well, I don't know he's, if they should bother rescuing yeah, him. He's just barely him in, in there. this episode. They feed you in the holodeck, don't they? Depends. <laughs> it starts off with Bellana is trying to science it up in engineering, and yeah, she can't they don't get have it a right. Science officer. She can't get it right because she's trying to beam energy into these canisters from this invisible nebula in space, right? So she's trying to beam these en- uh, right, this get the energy, nebula in the trying to get the nebula energy. She does, she, they don't have a cannon anyway, arm, see? That's but why. But it doesn't go well, so Janeway it. has to come by and... Uh, Janeway seems to be the science officer. It has to come by and help the chief engineer with her science. Yeah, she seems to be the only one that knows about science. Oh, Janeway has a new haircut this episode. So before you had big, weird, big, yeah. ha- big hair Janeway at the beginning, yeah, and now yeah. she's got this weird '90s future hair. Oh, it does not look good. I wonder her hair. I didn't think it looked very good. Well, later on, she has like just the, just kind of goes past her ears, yeah, she has and like it's a bob. more red. More relaxed. That looks fine, but at first it wasn't good. She looks very much like a old teacher. So Janeway says, "Okay, I'm gonna get Kim to help you with this." Oh, because no. you know she's gonna make He's them got do it. No real job. But anyway. Oh, she didn't ask Kes to help her. It's amazing. <laughs> no. She has a new so job. So Ens- they discover Ensign Kim is not in his quarters and he's not on the ship. He's oh. missing. Is he in the bottles? No, he's on the holodeck, oh. but they can't detect him. <laughs> of course, that damn holodeck. So what do they do? They send Tuvok 
and yes. Chicote in to find them. The best, the chief officers. Yeah, yeah. don't just send some like ensign. Yeah, don't just send random security guards. No, you gotta no, send no, the no, main no. crew. Yeah, yeah. Okay? They're always... if, you send, if you send just some random crew members, they're dead. <laughs> they're always you, dead. They're yeah, always yeah. dead. You gotta send the you gotta send the senior crew well, members. Maybe they sent them in before them. So, so they send them in. I'm like, don't go into the holodeck if Her if Harry Kim's in there alone. No, you what is he gonna use the holodeck for? Sign set up first. No, what is what would Harry Kim be using the holodeck for? So he could play his clarinet. No, no. <laughs> he's obviously going to be using it for porn. No, but he's he not. He doesn't do that kind he's of thing. He's acting out the Beowulf story. Oh which, yeah, that's my first. That would be my second. Which guess. was a big craze. Beowulf for some reason was a big craze in the nineties. Beowulf. Yeah, there was so many Beowulf? renditions of it in the nineties for some reason. Anyway, so Star Trek decided they were going to do it with the worst production values ever, and I mean like community theater level bad production values. But can the holodeck do any production? They didn't what? spend much money on this episode. Well, maybe okay? he pro he doesn't know very much. He I mean, when we get television himself. shows nowadays <laughs> where it's Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon, Rings yeah, of yeah, Power, yeah. the production values and those things, this was terrible. Oh. It was hard to watch. So they send in Tuvok and Chakotay. They're gone now, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're completely They're all gone. Up. So where are okay. they gone? Tell so us what are they going to do? Are they going to send in more? No, no, no. They finally okay. catch on. Paris comes up with the brilliant idea. We're going to send in the doctor. Because he's a hologram. Oh, Who cares, right? Oh, he scramble for sure. They only have one doctor. Anyway, so Kess is there. At first, she's just standing in the background, not saying a single thing. I thought that was going to be her only appearance this episode. <laughs> but no, she actually goes and gets lines and talks to the doctor. And she's like, you got to go do this. And you got to be part of the crew. And he's like, yeah, I know. And by the way, remember I said I wanted a name like several yeah, weeks yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought of my name. It's down to three. And so he goes into the holodeck and he's got his name ready. You oh. want to know what the doctor's name is? What is the doctor's name? Doctor, <laughs> uh, it's Doctor. What is it? I it's... remember it. I don't know it. I didn't think he had it. I'm name. trying to remember how to pronounce it because it was a really weird oh, pronouncement. Well, think about it next time. Schweitzer. <laughs> Doctor Schweitzer. Schweitzer. I know. Is what he is German? He's is going it? hardcore German. <laughs> he okay. Seem German. So he goes into this Beowulf thing. And it's like I'm Schweitzer, and they're like, "Yes, Lord Schweitzer." <laughs> I'm like, "What is this nonsense?" Oh God, it sounds bad. So how it did is they really get, bad. Why couldn't they be detected? Cause so apparently, what happened? Balana, when she was sciencing it yeah, up at yeah, the beginning yeah. and she couldn't get it right, the holodeck, she the put gas? she put some energy in there, and the other energy got out, and it went into the holodeck. Of course, it did. It and does. it wasn't just normal energy. Oh no, it strange was, it energy. Was a life form. It was a life form, an energy life form. Oh, yes. So she that. beamed over two of their life forms. She just kidnapped them. And one of them went into the holodeck and started messing it. And so started abducting the real people. So right. abducted Harry Kim and Chakotay and Tuvok over to the Space Nebula. Oh, they were there. So they're not there. even on the ship. Well, they're, they're, how could they live over there? Exactly. Okay. Oh. So apparently they're just, you know, they're energy beings now while they're over there. Oh, okay. And so what happened was they had to let go of the one that they had in uh, engineering because they were going to use it for, you know, energy. Was it in the warp core? No, it was just in this dumb canister. Oh. So, so Dr. Schweitzer has to let it out. And then the other energy oh. being that's this beast in the Beowulf story lets lets their crewmen go and they're oh, like, okay. Wow, that they're was a really dumb adventure. Hovering in a nebula, they would have been frozen to death. And the doctor's like, Maybe I'll pick a different name at the end. Oh, <laughs> Maybe I'll think I, of a different name. I don't recall a name on him at all other than the doctor. Anyway, that was EMH is what they used they called him yeah. for a while. Right. So that was another exciting episode okay. of Chakotay's Odyssey Thank you for featuring that the adventures of Janeway. So glad I didn't have to watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, you know what it's time for? What's the title? We're back for our reoccurring segment. We don't actually have a name for it, but we're going to review, I'm going to review season four of The Big Bang Theory. Oh, goodness. So we're back in the apartment building. We're not in the apartment this time. You got in a, the elevator? You I got us, see inside of it. You got us kicked out, so we're staying in front of the broken elevator in the hallway. Oh. So here's what I did. I just wrote down a few highlights from season four. 
okay? So if you're a hardcore fan of the Big Bang Theory, see if you remember any of these. <clears throat> uh, there's the Robot Hand and ER. If you remember that. Uh, Sheldon begins dating Amy Farrah Fowler, and they call her they call them Shamey, if they don't like that. It's the first time we get to see the Sheldon bot. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Let me know if you recognize any of these references down in the comments below. These were all hilarious. Uh, Raj's sister Priya comes to town. Oh, I do remember her. Okay, you remember who hooks up with her? Uh-huh. Yeah. They begin dating later on in the in the season. Penny, Bernadette, and Amy start having girls' nights. Mm. They start hanging out. Will Wheaton returns for his third appearance at, at an Indiana Jones screening. Oh, that's funny. That was a great one. We get to meet Penny's dad for the first time. Uh, he seems like a nice guy, but it didn't really You're stand out to me. Dad. Oh, there's a funny moment where Raj and Howard accidentally kiss. I didn't see that, but I remember. Okay, and Bernadette's there as well. Seems unlikely, but anyway. <laughs> Amy swoons over Zach, Penny's friend, on and off again boyfriend. The guys, Penny and Zach, form the Justice League. That is a classic one because they all dress up as ju as the Justice League. And Zach, okay. because he's tall and good looking, he's Superman. So they actually have an actual Superman. The whole gang go on a trip to a science conference. Doesn't go well. I do uh, remember them going. There's a big to Bollywood that. dance number sequence with Raj and Bernadette. I don't think I saw that one. That one was hilarious. It's because Raj is uh Raj keeps crushing over Bernadette. Raj and Bernadette, uh huh. Yeah, well he's Well he, he's, she's a girl that he knows. Yeah, and he can't talk to girls, so yeah. well he can't talk to women, let's say. Uh Leonard gets whored out for the university fundraising by the university one. president. It's quite funny. Of all the guys to pick, they pick <laughs> Leonard. <laughs> He's the one that the uh, the rich lady liked the oh, most. Oh, they auction him off or something. No, they just they just kind of whore him out. Oh, God. <laughs> Leonard and Priya start dating. Penny's upset about this, but it's kind of her own fault. If you if you were if you watch that season, Sheldon has three new ven. New friends over for a party. And plus we get a surprise peer appearance from LeVar Burton. Oh. Yeah. He seems, they accord, accord, seems like a in, nice guy. In that show, probably more than they were in Picard, for God's sakes. Will oh. Wheaton was only in Picard for like one minute. Yeah, Will Wheaton's a reoccurring character on yeah. Big Bang Theory. LeVar Burton just showed up the one time there at the end as a cameo appearance. Oh, there's a long stairway of silence where Penny and... Uh, Leonard, they have to walk all the way up the stairs in silence because oh, yeah. it's awkward. Oh no, it's it's Pen it's Penny and Priya. Great uh, calf the, muscles. Oh, I did re I remember that because it's Leonard's current and, girlfriend and yeah. his ex girlfriend. And she wants to do what the monkeys do to Priya. She wants to like throw <laughs> her poop at them or something. Okay. I do remember that. Howard and Bernadette become engaged. That was really nice. Priya, because she's a lawyer, she dissects the roommate agreement. Remember the infamous roommate I'm agreement? I'm going to forget that. Okay. Yes. My favorite line record about that, it wasn't from this season, I think, where they're arguing and Laird's like, screw the roommate agreement. Sean's like, you don't screw the roommate agreement. The roommate agreement screws you. <laughs> They just, the writers of that show, they just made up whatever they wanted to be in that That's what thing. I was doing wrong in the past with all my old roommates. We okay. just didn't have a good enough agreement. Mrs. Wallowitz ends up in the hospital. And it's unfortunate that that kind of foreshadowed what happened later on. Oh. But anyway, uh, Laren and Priya break up. It's only just for the one season. And the finale, Penny does the walk of shame after waking up with Sheldon's new roommate. If you know who his no, new roommate was at the time. I do remember some of that season. I didn't see it all. Anyway, I never really watched the show. Like It turns on. out it turns out not to be true, but oh. it was a funny uh, cliffhanger for the, oh, okay. uh, the end of the season there. Right. It's like a who killed JR. Who did kill JR? <laughs> did they ever say? I don't remember. People now. used to go around in the 80s with those shirts. I shot JR. Yeah, and then The Simpsons did it. Yep. I know it was Maggie. <laughs> so in one of the flashbacks in The Simpsons, Homer actually had that shirt. Oh, did he? Yeah, yep. yeah. 
So that was my notes from highlights for season four of The Big Bang Theory. Okay. Love watching this show. I know you do. Love seeing... Uh, I'm done with it. <laughs> maybe one day I'll have to get into watching Young Sheldon. I, I don't know. I, I couldn't do that one either. <laughs> Christine, how can people get in touch with us? Oh, okay. we're going to have some comments very shortly. Oh, we have some comments. Well, why don't you do the comments? No, no, no. Do oh, the, okay. The people know how they can get in okay. touch with us besides leaving a comment down below if you want us oh, to read out I, like, your stuff on next part. episode. <laughs> but see, they can reach us at Canada Movie TV Hosers at gmail.com. Absolutely. Um, they That's can... for suggesting... Uh, Media, different types of media for us to review, or if you want to suggest a news topic. Right. They can find you on Twitter at St. John's Critic. That's where Gregory posts his things. And they yep. can find us on Twitter for our show at Canada, Canada Hosers. Hosers. And they can use the hashtag Canada Hosers. Am I correct? Yes. I haven't um, gotten any, any If they want to that, bring our attention uh, to that. So, what kind of comments did we get? We got another comment from Linda. Uh, I can't pronounce her last name there because I butchered it last yeah, episode. She commented on our FUBAR trailer review. Oh, yeah, that looks fun. Cool. She said, I am a huge fan of Arnold Schwarzenegger action movies. I can't wait to see FUBAR. I didn't enjoy Sabotage movie. It is because the violence was were terrifying and intense. I didn't see Sabotage. I didn't see I haven't watched a lot. Sounds of, violent. Yeah, I don't I haven't seen any of his either. movies in a while. But it looks fun. This one looks fun. I don't think it's going to be too violent. Yeah, I think this is a series and it does look funny. It does look it good. It looks pretty slapstick comedy. So thanks it's for the comment, series, Linda. Whatever it is, it looks funny. Now, I got a couple messages from oh. Carlito Bandido on your Star Trek Picard finale review. Oh, yes. And at first, it's a, he said, diehard fan here. This review was honestly cringe, and which wasn't that nice to say. So I called him out on it. And he said, eh, that came out aggressive, which it happens. We all make mistakes. Didn't really mean for it to come out that way. That's okay. We're cool. Just meant to express how there's clearly problems. Just didn't really focus on all the good surrounding it. Well, I'm also a diehard Star Trek fan, and I just found that it went sour. Yeah, but you I gotta just, at least say what you enjoyed about it, not I just go on about enjoy, what you didn't like. I did enjoy a few things about it. I did enjoy, well, Q didn't die. Spoiler. What's that actor's name? John Delancey. John Delancey. He didn't die. So yeah. Q's still around. Yeah. Well, can Q die? Like this he did die, immortal, though. Immortal, infinite being. Because that's what the whole thing was about last season. It was about the death of Q. And now he's back. Yeah, and he's back. How's he um, back? Well, he did, that's why they're like, I thought you were dead. Is it you science? Know? No, Q doesn't do science. Q does Q magic. The continuum yeah. must have given him more life. I don't know. Q was essentially a space I like that. And I liked all the cats getting back. I just felt somewhere it was just not to character. I just, that's what really bugged me. Mm -hmm. But I did have fun still watching it. I liked the first two. I liked the other two seasons better though than this last season. Uh, like it was nice to bring all the cats back, but I just think that there was flaws in it. So I didn't like So it what's the next Star Trek thing you're going to be watching? Well, I always like Lower Decks. I think we get another season of that. I don't know. And I don't I'll mind, have to watch that show sometime. I don't mind Strange New World. I think that's the name of it. Mm -hmm. The other one. That's Are they like, doing more Discovery? I don't know. I kind of hope not. I'm <laughs> sick of watching it. You could just not watch it if you don't like it. No, no one I says you watch have to. it because you got to know what happened. Uh, You're just punishing yourself. Anyway. Well, I, thanks for your message there, yeah. Carlito Ben. Was I'm glad Carlito you liked Bandito? it. I wish I would have liked it better. Bandito. I just nice I name. it went weird sometimes. Anyway, but I did enjoy there was lots of parts I did enjoy. I just think that season one and two were more true to character. Okay. Oh good. Okay. Well thanks for the comment there, Carlito Ben Bambito. We appreciate that. If anyone else wants to leave us a comment, go right ahead. We're going to sign off for another weekend now. By the way, our episodes will be coming out, should be coming out every Saturday now. We're just doing like one big episode. Oh, okay. And that, and <laughs> I'll release certain segments earlier if I have time during the week. And then I might set up something as well so that people can see segments earlier if they want to, right? Okay. So I'm looking into that right now. Okay. But for, until next time, take care, everyone. Thank you for checking Bye. this out. We appreciate it.